host the Don and Mike show, and they'll say what they wish. Where else would you rather be than right here, right now? Well, now we know. Now we know for sure. Yes. Because we're only on one radio station right now today. Right. And now we know these guys come with this place. Oh, man, I was hoping that we lost them. I was really hoping they were gone. I thought they were all network guys, too, Mike. Based on a true story, God damn it. he was another Nazi with one true enemy. Himself, a man of faith, a man of hate, and a soul on his heart. You were discretionary by... Did you see them on the telethon? <laughs> oh, great, God. They were the guys with the boots, right? That's exactly. Good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Marvel Lobby. Nice. And all the ships that be back from partying with the Widow Bronson. Here's Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. You bastards. You know he was close to me. <laughs> Don and Mike show. New episode on this Tuesday. Death Wish. September 2th. Right. And let me say, in case you didn't say it yesterday, I'll say it now for you. Rabbit, 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 rabbit. Um, well, before I give the phone numbers, let me introduce Buzz. Uh, hi, Buzz. Hi, Don. Mike, Buzz Burbank here. Howdy, Buzz. Is anyone listening? Hey, what happened? Shut up. Did you wash the ass today? Did someone call for a doctor? There you go. Well, the opening is... There it is. Oh, 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 there you go. Oh, 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 the second to get on the air today. No, 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 no. On 106.7. WJFK. Welcome. At 3.06. <laughs> Local time. <laughs> no need to say that, Buzz. Yeah, I guess that's true. No need to say that, yeah. being as the only people hearing this show right now, <laughs> gentlemen... Are the good people who have always been listening to the show, gentlemen, here now in control right. in uh, Washington D.C. and greetings, and we're back. That's it. We're back. And we, we told everybody that something was going to happen mm -hmm. on September second, and something happened on September second. It, it did, and uh, we will let you know as soon as we know. <laughs> now, <laughs> this is really. It's, it's quite odd. It's quite nice uh, that, at, at least for today's show, feels good. Yeah, well, Why not? <laughs> Why not? You bet your ass today, on, on today's show, when the, the, uh, the car cunny comes on, when the traffic lady comes on, <laughs> the, the, uh, the, traffic, the traffic won't be 10 seconds. Ah. Because we don't have to worry about fiddling with the network uh, time today. Wonderful. So we'll be able to have, have longer traffic for you. And, and I know that's something that's really a complaint. Yes. So hopefully we'll be able to get some better traffic information. Good. Uh, more, more, you know, a little bit more of a wide area because there's so many areas that are effed up around here now that uh, people will appreciate that. And uh, the, For now. The, 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 yeah, or, or maybe forever. For, yeah. Forever or for now, we don't. We, we don't, don't know. And you know, for know. quite some long time, all, all we, we knew, knew was, was what, what you, you told us. us. <laughs> so, uh, you know, a lot of people out there thought that we were s simply beating on our chests, doing that whole, you know, untamed disc jockey King Kong thing for the last three months. No. Yeah. No, we were really doing what we've done before, which is expressing our frustrations. And, uh, well, we're playing chicken, and no one's moved away yet. <laughs> so uh, as, as of today, and, and maybe for, for tomorrow, and... Uh, there it is again. For the high Allen, perhaps foreseeable future, uh -huh. we're heard exclusively on 106.7 WJFK. I'm proud of it. Now, we feel very bad for the people who listen to Or so we're told. <laughs> really, I have no faith at all. As far as we know. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I just thought of that now this well, very I moment. Could take, I could take a call, and I guarantee it'll be someone saying, where are you calling? You know, where are you today? Ah, uh, that's fine. You want to take... Now, it says 916. That's Sacramento. Let's see. <laughs> They'll probably call and say we're on, because that's the way they work there. Don and Mike show. <laughs> Hello? Hey, are you guys, are you guys um, messed up today? See? Ah. Well, what do you think? Well, you know, I just turned it up. Uh, I didn't hear that. And... and Sacramento calls would not be bright enough. Hold on. To be able to enlighten us. Go to area code 908, wherever that, wherever that is. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Or it's another Sacramento call. Sorry. Hi, Don and Mike. Hi, how you doing? We're doing very well, thanks. Are you guys are on the air today? Yes, we are. Uh, okay, thanks a lot. All right, bye-bye. Once again. Oh, bye-bye. In, in, in dumbass land 101. <laughs> All right, let's go to area code. Hold on now. Look at, now, look at how we've done this now. We've actually, they actually prepared a list of area codes for me. Oh, good. good. That'll be so handy. The area code 609 is, well, that's New Jersey. We've been gone there for a while. 854. 854. 
Eight five six. No. Five seven one. You know they change those Where's pesky that? area codes all the time. Hello, Don and Mike. Hi. Uh, when are you guys going to be back on live? We are back on live right now. We're doing the show now, and we're talking to you on the show. Man, this makes your flesh crawl. What is that? No Hold way. On. Turn it. Listen, where are you calling from? We got someone who yeah. may be able to help us with this. Where are you calling from? Good old Sacramento. I'm okay. Sorry. All right. Well, turn the radio up, and let's hear what they're what they're running on the network. <laughs> okay. Please turn it up. Uh -huh. Oh, well, I, can't, I can't make that out. No. Do you want to hear it? You want to be able to hear it? It obviously from the from the monosyllabic grunting that I'm hearing. It, it's our show. That's scary. That is your yeah, that's your show. You want it up higher? No, that's okay. All right, thanks. No, goodbye. Bye bye. All right. Well. So, so that question has been answered. Good. I'm glad we got that answer. That uh, we were actually told before the show that that was a possibility. Yeah. That. We'd be taken off the network. Yes. So here we are, and we're very happy. And for everybody listening in the other cities that can't hear us right now, we're sorry. And uh, we, you know, once again, I reiterate, we'll let you know when we know. We don't know. Yeah, we, we don't. just don't know. We don't. We don't, we don't know. <laughs> it's, it's funny. <laughs> we really don't. You know, know, when you say that, it makes it sound like you're questioning us. No, oh, no, not at all. I'm agreeing. None of us know. No one knows. I not enjoy the fact that you're apologizing to people that can't hear you. Yeah, right. That's that's them. You're having trouble hearing the yeah, It makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> no, hey. but, but because I believe that somehow the word will get back to those fine people. I don't want those people to think, even if they're in our rear view mirror, that we just packed up our tent and left without saying anything. No, and I, I, I hope that's not the case. But, uh, but anyway. I, you know, I, I'll accept whatever our fate is. As for now, we're happy with this. As we said, we would have been all along. We said we'd be happy sure. being syndicated. We'd be happy if we were just a local show. Right. And for today, and, and from the talks we had with the guy before the show, I don't think that there's any big major plan to turn the switch back on tomorrow. I don't know. I, I don't know. So anyway. I don't know. Here we go on WJFK. <laughs> And, but as as you, maybe you can tell with the tapes, we prepared for this eventuality. Mm -hmm. See? Listen up, you BM eaters. From Washington, D.C. on WJFK, you can call John and Mike toll-free at 1-877-325-3636. They're ready to believe you. There it is. We got it. It's there. We got it. So anyway, here we are on WJFK. Now I'm going to have to stop myself from giving the time all the time because you don't want to hear the we time. We didn't give the time uh, all the time when we before we were syndicated, really. I know we gave the time all the time when we did mornings. Right, right. We three, gave the time religiously. Three twelve. I'll stop doing that. Twelve minutes after three o'clock. I'll stop that. <laughs> and then you'd say if you have to be somewhere and you do. The I would only math. do that as a go as a goof. Forty eight minutes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm I'm get somewhere at four o'clock. Do that. <laughs> Anyway. I'm a tard that way. Hi there. <laughs> How are you doing? How about that rain, huh? Mm. <laughs> oh, God, stop it. Now you're making me laugh. <laughs> Chance of more tea storms today and tonight. Oh, tea storms. <laughs> Tomorrow, God crying again. Yes. High 80. Right now, Northwest 81. We sure lucked out over the weekend, though. You know, that, that, uh, that front didn't, uh, didn't <laughs> grab us as much as I thought it was. Could have been worse. Yeah. You know. So... Listen, here we are with the show, and we're going to do that in Dumfries. I, I, we had some very pleasant weather. Uh, it, was, it was not bad in Virginia either, Mike. <laughs> Dumfries is in Virginia. We've, we've worked so Dumfries long. Dumfries is in Virginia. Oh, you're right. Come on. You're right. I'm sorry. Be local, be local. We've worked so long. <laughs> <laughs> we've worked so long at not being local. Right. right. Mike, this just into me from the National Weather Service in Sterling, Virginia. Yes. Dumfries is in Virginia. <laughs> Current temperature in Dumfries, 81. WKFK. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> God. Got it. This will be fun. It this will be fun. Even if it's short term, this will be fun. And if it's long term, so be it. If it's long term, it won't be this pronounced. <laughs> yeah. Trust us. Oh yeah. I mean, come on. It's we'll do what we've done all the time. You know, we, we never. It's just like the first <laughs> particular. We used to defend ourselves against that. Right? Yeah, but it's not doing a show that's too local. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, yes, I know we did, but we only did that because that was the only the only argument that we could take. But what I'm saying, my point is, and I'm, I'm being very inside here, is that when before we went national, we didn't do a particularly overwhelming local. But we show. did. But we did say WJFK. We did. 
We, did. We, did, we, did, we just didn't talk about it. The weather. It's just funny. This and is making me laugh. We did do the weather. Right. And, and yeah. we did. You did those. You love those little weather jingles. Oh, I do. And, and, we, and we did talk about whatever was happening around here. Yes. And speaking of, what's up with that mixing bowl? <laughs> <laughs> that Crazy, you killing me. I mean, Jesus <laughs> Christ. And I don't know about you, but two quarterbacks? <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye, Danny Werfel. <laughs> <laughs> We're just getting our sea legs right now. Yeah. We're just getting our sea legs. Actually, there's really there's something quaint about this that we're only heard here in our hometown. This is not necessarily a bad thing. No. If if the other thing goes back, that could be a that could be a good thing too. It's I understand. It's all good. You know what? I'm just going to say, it doesn't feel all that different. It really doesn't. It's funny, is what it is. You know me, I've been laughing for about the last hour. No, I agree. <laughs> I have been laughing. I've almost been laughing before this whole thing went down, because it is just kind of, it's silly. Yeah. And you don't know all of the different uh, possible variations that we planned for today. We plan, we, we had one, Robbie, do we still have the tapes? We got one set of tapes with the phone solicit saying... From Baltimore on Live 105 and Ocean City on 96 right. Rock. Mm -hmm. Because we thought that, that they might be sure. joining us today. Yeah. But another It's been kooky and crazy. Just here. It's been more interesting than Arnold's political campaign. <laughs> on WJFK. Yeah, and uh, so we was with the black girl. <laughs> I don't know if you read the stuff in Wee Magazine oh about God. him. To orgy. Yeah. To orgy. I had the big oh. orgy. And I had the big thing. I was just talking. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean anything. You know, he's getting more and more scrutiny. And you know what? He's got a debate. They can't. They you know, they're going to do their... They're gonna, are they going to have a debate? There will be a debate. One debate. Two days before the erection. That's in, such crap. In Southern California. <laughs> they ought to have five. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely they should. Uh, listen... How's everybody doing in the Beltway? <laughs> How you doing outside the Beltway? Sorry about that California talk. <laughs> yeah, Ixnay on California came on. I'm real sorry. Ixnay on that. That's right, and you won't hear Kansas come out of my mouth. <laughs> Gee, Buzz, you think your dad is happy or sad today? I don't. I'm not sure he noticed the difference. <laughs> there you go. Because there's probably a lot of people who just don't notice the difference. At first, yeah, I'm sure that's true. No, I'm sure maybe through the whole show. Maybe yeah. through the whole week they won't notice the difference. Mm -hmm. Anyway, here we are on uh, WJFK. Very good. Hello to all of you from the Apple Capital of the nation's capital. <laughs> That'd be where? Winchester? Yeah. Winchester. Well, I, uh, I attended the Apple Blossom Festival with my young daughters. You were the Apple Marshal. No. No, that would be Vince Van, uh, Dick Van Patten. Well, still, in my mind, you were the Apple Man. Well, they, Apple. it's a little too conservative. I don't think they'd have me. Apple Jack. I was the Noakesville... Day parade person. Hello, Don and Mike show. <laughs> or so. <laughs> or so. Hello. Hey, Don and Mike. Howdy. Hey, I totally support the isolationist movement. We don't need. We don't need any Californians. We don't need those dirty Jayhawkers from Kansas. We don't need wow. any Pennsylvania people. Wow. Let's do them all. Mike. This is DC, baby. All right. Thank you. Hello, Don and Mike. WJFK. Don. Don. Yes, one zero six seven. Hello. <laughs> Hello, sir. The best thing about being local. Surf or George Michael? Who would you do? Surf is yeah. surf. If I had to have gay sex with one of them. Surf. If surf I was, if or I was George in, Michael. If I was in prison and they threw George and mm -hmm. Surf into myself, I wouldn't do George. I'd do but, George. Oh God! Wow. Who, That's gayer who, than me saying Surf. No, it's what's, not. What's better, Surf's hair or George Michael's skin? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're both kind of orange. <laughs> that's where you. That's where you draw the distinction right there. Do you want to? But be... I, the whole time I would be praying for Joe Cribs. <laughs> <laughs> well, you stand alone there. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike. Shut. Hey, Don, Don, Don and Mike. Mike uh, welcome show. from downtown Don Don Springfield. I was gonna say I have I have a bit on top or shut. <laughs> but I said Don and Mike shut. Right. Instead of Don and Mike show. Hello. Yeah, hey, uh, have you guys seen the mixing bowl construction yet? Isn't that the most amazing thing since Disney World? Okay, everybody, now listen, don't. Don't jump on here because you think you can. Let me just explain it. Even though we're only on one station today, the same Certain rules. <laughs> same rules. Yeah. Man, if we say it... Certain rules of discipline. It's not like we're going to throw out the rule book. <laughs> if we say it, that doesn't mean you can say it. Now, let's get this straight, okay? No matter how many stations we're on. We're the guys doing the show. We're the guys listening to the show. Bingo, baby! <laughs> oh, man, did I have calls from him, too. Did you really? Yep. 
not able to work it out to get on the Stallion Show in Ocean City. Right. The last mm. two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Mike, we just had I know that schedule was pretty crazy. We, we have a scheduling <laughs> yeah. conflict. I know, you know, after you got done uh, taking your son to college, that the, uh, you know, the amount of days that you had, you know, you, I'm, I'm very disappointed you weren't able to free up time for this value. <laughs> you know what I... Because I, I know you really wanted to do that. And I wish you, you could play them. You can't play a... Here's another fabulous rule. You can't play a message on your cell phone, even if it's on your cell phone, if it's from somebody else without their permission. Right. So I have to get this guy's permission... And I, and I still don't know how he got my cell phone number, but the messages that this guy Stallion left me. Stallion was t uh, trying to get you to go on his show personally? From OC? Yeah. Right. Dying to have me on. And as we were down there for the, the last two weeks, down at the ocean hunt, watching this thing on the cable access, he kept mentioning, Hey, it's a Stallion Bingo, baby! Going to have a very special guest on next week. I know it. I can't say who it is, but going to have a special oh. guest on. And that's what did it. <laughs> and I didn't, I just, I couldn't do it. It's too bad. I just, I could not, I could not do it. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, and guys, well, at least it's going to be easier to get through now. I was only on hold for about a uh, minute. Yeah, well, it might be easier. See, you're calling on the 202 number. Right. The other numbers are still totally jammed up. <clears throat> All right, thank you, though. Smart one. What? He's gone. Well, all right, well, suck me. Okay, how's that? <laughs> how you like, how you like that? How you like me now? There's enough hate to go around, too, you know. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Is this a long show? Yes, on WJFK. Hello. Great. Okay. Um, I, you guys are back then. Yeah, we are back. Wonderful. We're wonderful. Here, we're here talking to you now on well, JFK. I, I know you are, and this is Don, because I can recognize your voice. And Mike. Uh, no, I'm talking to Don right now. No, but Mike was on at the beginning of the call as yes, well. We are, we are, okay, I hear you, Mike. I hear you. Yeah, we're actually both speaking to you right now. Um, Sorry, I've been able to get that concept after 18 years. No, I, I, I have the concept. No, um, you don't. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't want to be difficult, but, but you really don't. At the beginning of the conversation, even though I did say Don and Mike show, then I said JFK, Mike did say... I didn't Hello. hear Mike, then. I'm sorry. Yes, but I mean, you see, you would know. I hear you now. You would know that we're both talking to you when you call in. Even, I, even, I if, I'm, even if I'm speaking on, or on the rare occasion... It speaks to that rule book thing we were talking about oh, before. No, on the rare occasion that I'm grasping for oxygen and Mike gets to get a word in, mm -hmm. even right. then, you know it's both of us here. Absolutely. We're like those Siamese... And that's the word I hey. say more than anything else. Absolutely. Siamese twins. Hey, can I tell you, uh, uh, ask you guys something? Yes, Join, yes. Joined in the penis. <laughs> um, I have a suggestion. Uh, Joe has not let me on many, many times. Why is that? Uh? I don't know why. Um, it's the first time I got you guys on, and I'm happy. Um, let me just say, you're a great caller, ass. I have a suggestion for the sex quiz. Have you been calling often, ass? Huh? Have you been calling often, ass? Often? Yeah, I mean, do you call frequently, yes? Yes. Now, now listen, hold on. Hold on. Do you pronounce it often or often, yes? Often. Uh, you pronounce the T? Uh, I guess I do. Why don't you, uh, can you turn your radio down, yes? Uh, yeah, big, big knob, turn it to the left, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get to it, ass? Yes, I turned it down. Thank you. Thank you, ass. <laughs> <laughs> Well, come on, come on, ass. No, I have a suggestion for the sex quiz. Yes, silly ass. Um, the one with the, the um, the question where you say, "Have you?" Uh, yes, dumbest of all dumb asses. Have you ever had sex while menstruating? You could add a question. Have you ever got the red badge of courage? Oh God. Ass. 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 Why not? Listen, ass. There's a real good reason that you are doing whatever you're doing now, running from the police, whatever it is, and we're here doing the show. And what's that? Are you eating something? No. Yes. No. I'm drinking coffee. Okay. Listen, ass, we appreciate the fact that you're a listener. I'd like are, to taste that backwash. There are some people who are listeners and some people who are callers. You're just a listener, ass. I call, too. Joe shows great judgment yes. in not putting you on it. I tried to call about your sleep apnea thing one time too. You know, Mike. Yeah, you I don't sound like you got it. I don't. I, I don't. Yeah, I do. And I would like to know if you're still using that machine. I don't think we have to to you know hide under the fact of uh, uh, under the radar the fact we're calling him an ass. No. No, I, I don't use that machine anymore, ass. I'm getting rid of mine too. Cause I said I don't use that machine anymore. Did you hear me say that? Yes, yes. I did. Yes, I did. That's a good ass. <laughs> I don't think you're a very good listener, ass. Why are you guys being like this today? 
We're not being like anything, ass. Because of you, ass. Hey, ass, how come you just don't move to, to Sacramento, ass? That's where I'm calling you from, near Sacramento. Wait a minute, hold on. We're having this conversation with a guy who can't even hear the show? Um, yeah, that's why I wanted to know. Where uh, are you calling <laughs> from, ass? I am near Sacramento, you fat bastards. All right. So, ass, how come you didn't just ask us, ass? How come... What you're hearing on the radio is not us talking to you, ass. Because I figured this, uh, you guys went on vacation. You never and, figured and anything out in your life, ass. And they're putting this other crap on. I mean, it's an old show, evidently. I we're, hear, I we're, back, we're back from vacation, ass. Well, then, but I guess we're not going to get you in Sacramento anymore, right? Ah. There you go, gold star ass. And incidentally, wait a minute, it's after Labor Day. Shouldn't you be holding up a stop and go sign somewhere? <laughs> no. <laughs> Right. That's, why I, that's why I called, because I didn't know exactly when you guys were getting back. Well, we're back, ass. And I knew that once you got back, that possibly we, we not, might not get you anymore. Yeah, well, we, we don't, listen, ass, we don't know what's going to happen. And they're not, they, they got an old show on. You're talking about, uh... All right, all right we don't, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. We got that, yeah. ass. Yeah. All right, th matter. thanks for calling, ass. Well, are we going to get you on? We just yeah. answered that question, ass. We don't know, ass. Okay. All right, ass. <laughs> So you guys are on in, back there now. Well, it, it's nice. It's nice that I got you guys and not Joe. No. Yes, ass. Um, I don't think an oil drilling pipe, you know, one of those little <laughs> big ones that they use offshore, could get through this cranium. Can sleep apnea ever cause death? <laughs> yes, it can. Yes, it can. And return that machine today. <laughs> well, I, I am. I'm going to get rid of it. Uh, ass, thank, you. You, ass. thank you. I can't handle it. Thank you, ass. Can I ask another question? <laughs> Since you're on a roll, ass. Yes, ass. Okay, I um, I I would like you guys to do a sir. Well, I guess it will. It won't matter because I can't hear you anyway. There you go, ass. Yeah, it won't there matter. you go. Why don't you just hang up now, ass? Okay, ass. Thank you. Bye bye. I love you guys, ass. Love you too, ass. I saw you guys in Sacramento. It was a great show. Okay. I know. Hope you enjoyed it, ass. I did. It okay. was great. All right. Goodbye. Bye. Bye, ass. I'll miss the complicated fabric that makes up the citizenry of that region. No, he stayed on the line. Hey, you are you guys on? Oh, no. Hold on, he's still there. Yes, ass, what? My are you guys bad. doing a dance? No. No, there's no need to do that dance today. Why? Oh, stop it. <laughs> Come on, ass. <laughs> I'll get some sleep. <laughs> I, I, just, I just woke up, actually. All right, Slim Ass. Of course you did. Bye, ass. Bye, you guys. Love you. Love, Love you, Rob. Love you, Buzz. Bye, ass. Love you, Bye. ass. Bye, Bye. ass. Bye. <laughs> Love it. Please hang, hang up. up. Hang up, ass. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, listen, I'm there. There you go. I finally used a little bit of, 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 of my reserve restraint and just hung up. Otherwise, it you know, we might as well still be on there. Yeah, and it didn't matter to him. <laughs> right. And it won't matter to any of those people. <laughs> and that's what you know, those people. Those people. Yes. Those, those aliens. Yes, I know who you mean. Those people. Those aliens from California. Those people. Those. I could change my tune. I could talk differently at some of point. Of course, I understand. But for now, they're when they aliens. can hear us. When they can hear us. Of course. Those aliens. So this is a nutty, nutty, nutty the thing. Asparagus growing hump. Now let's let's see if we could let's see if we could just move on. Do. Let's, let's, you want to try to do yes, the show? Let's do. On WJFK? Well, there's a lot to talk about, is there not? Yeah, I had one a hell of a vacation. Hello, uh, 1067. Hello. Hello. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. I'd like to know how Bart's doing. I'll tell you that, honey. I can't tell you now, but I'll tell you. Please stay tuned. Coming up. I will stay tuned. Thank you. To 1067, your exclusive home of the Don and Mike show. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't going to hear it anywhere else. Hello, Don and Mike. Yeah, hi. Uh, I live in the D.C. area, and I was wondering when you guys are going to be coming to my town. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's good. It's good. And look at that. He hung up and everything. There you go. Bingo. Oh, it's good to be home. It is. It's good to be home. You try spending two weeks with just your wife after you've had a kid there. For 18 years as a buffer. Mm -hmm. You try it. And you try to go through the emotional wreck that I was the last two weeks with this. And I tell you, I'm glad. I was even glad today to get the call from the lawyer and to come in and have the, the meeting with uh, Alan and everything. Mm -hmm. I was glad. And, and I'm, I know my wife is glad, too. Mm. She's tired of seeing me. 
She's tired of seeing my face. May I get a small technical issue out of the way early on since we just started and since we're just back? Sure. Just a question for the powers that be, if anyone could help me out. If we could perhaps get a, uh, a fresh windscreen on this microphone. It smells as though someone has been wiping themselves with it. <laughs> I just thought I'd pass that along. And I realize that perhaps there's been a lot of... Uh, Stuff going in on the weekends. There's like two weekends we've been gone, and they had the Redskins people in here over the weekend. Well, and someone, you know, it smells as though someone has really been oh. using it as a suppository. Charlie's going to switch it. It is well, gross. Well, Charlie switches it. And I've had a cold, so I'm not my, my olfactory. Uh, wow. <laughs> Mike. Oh, 100%. I'll wash this one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hold on a second. I'm writing down a name now from Redskins Radio. <laughs> and this is, I believe, <laughs> this is where I believe uh, yeah. your main odor <laughs> is coming from <laughs> as we spotlight another member of our Redskins Radio. Thank you, Radio Charlie. Crew. That makes all the difference in the world. <laughs> Charlie, was I wrong about that? Charlie got a nice whiff of it, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. that's pretty nasty. You. Yeah, not only do we have all the vacation stuff to get to, we have the uh, the Jerry... The Jerry Telethon, mm. and I don't know if anybody besides myself and Rob and Rob's father bothered to watch this thing anymore. I did not watch the Telethon. What I did watch was a lengthy interview with Larry King, with with Jerry being being Jerry. But this this Telethon, I, I don't know if we are going to be able to explain to you, get the point across visually, how he looks. I, I told Rob at one point yesterday when we were on the phone, I said... He looks like a cross now between Burt Reynolds and Jiminy Glick. There's, uh, there's, <laughs> it is. He really does. And there's right. a new thing this year. He is every bit as fat and as jowly as he was. He still has that pewter-colored hair. Is but it the eyes? It's not so much the eyes. He's jittery. Yeah. He can't well, he's That's still. what I'm talking about, Rob. Right. Because when he was on Larry King, and he, he got was the doing shakes. a lot of this. Yeah, and you can hear some of it in the tapes we, we're going to play, but right. his hands are constantly opening and closing. Mm -hmm. It really looks like he's on, like, speed. Yeah, well, he, I think he's on a lot of medication. Yeah. He, he got the, the shakes, and we've got all of this, and as usual, you know, just like with Elvis, we're the only guys in the world that still hold on to this thing. I will just tell you that throughout all the Jerry Lewis tapes we'll play today, there's one, every year Jerry gives us one highlight. Right. Mm -hmm. I think last year or maybe the year before it was when he did the whole thing about you have to be lucky. To have muscular dystrophy to oh. get on this show. He, when he's doing that stream of consciousness stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, this time, Mike, let me just say, he's on with firefighters. <laughs> he's discussing filling the boot. And he uses the word retard. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my. That's a... Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Still to come. Still to come on today's show. Wow. Jerry Lewis. After a, after a <laughs> bunch of just purging from me and then uh, purging from Mike. Yes. We've got, we've got so many issues. I figure, why go to the psychiatrist this week? No need. We've got a Tuesday show. And it's a Tuesday. It feels like a Monday. It does indeed. And I'll tell you something else that I'm not caught up in. I'm not caught up in the NFL fever down at the mall. I'm tired of seeing all of the, the, the news crews down there like it's a happening. Like it's a happening. I'll tell you, we've been, to, we've been to these things before, this giant NFL experience down on the mall. Mm -hmm. Here's what it is. You wait in line for 20 minutes to have a guy throw a football at you. Right. And then you catch the football. But, but after you catch the football, you, you got like people from Old Spice Deodorant coming over and, and giving you a, a piece of paper about that. And you've got a guy from the New York Stock Exchange giving you a piece of paper about that. And you can buy something everywhere. And it's really, it's just... It's just, I mean, I, I feel... It's a whole big marketing shill yeah. thing. Right. I feel sacrilegious talking about it because I love football so much. And I love the NFL so much. But it's even pissed me off when I've seen the ads over the last two weeks, the way they're promoting this on ABC. Thursday night, NFL kickoff with Britney Spears, Mary J. Blige, Aerosmith, Aretha Franklin... And the Jets and the Redskins. <laughs> that really is how they're doing it. Yeah. They're hyping everything besides the game itself. Yeah. Right. You're, 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 you're a purist. In, in your own little way, you're, you're a purist. You're the purity of the game, a la Vince Lombardi. <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead. Run the, you know, run the show. Do the, do the crap. So, but make sure that the... Oh, is Charlie fixed oh, your... Charlie. Did, did, did he water our light screen? Oh, Charlie put some light... Super sweet it's, smelling stuff. It's just hand soap from the bathroom. It's lovely. Oh, that's nice. nice. I can hardly nice. smell uh, that guy. 
<laughs> now, Mike. Now, say, now you've eliminated. It could be anybody. You've eliminated the suspect. I, I've eliminated all the women percent. that broadcast on this station. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be none. None. Zippy. None. There you so, go. So I've seen these uh, these ads, and then the last couple of days I've been watching the news, and, <laughs> and it, the lead story every day, even more than the bad weather and, and all the other stuff, is an excitement down on the mall as Washington is pretty proud to be hosting this extravaganza. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not ready for that. Tough to, for me to get caught up in, uh, you know, in all this football fever when... Uh, when there's a pennant race on, <laughs> you know, and we're in the thick of it. Hey, yeah, you guys, I had a couple of. You know, we, we're getting hammered. We're getting killed all the time. But I mean, still a hell of a lot. But wasn't it last year at, at this time? Didn't I come back from vacation and say I'm ready to pay off? They were out of it. Yeah, they were out of it. And now they're just on their way to being out of it. Yeah, they keep trying to get out of it, and then the other teams kind of let them back in. <laughs> you know, it's a strange thing. The Red Sox are just. It's not that the Red Sox are refusing to die. Because they are dying. It's that the other teams are refusing to win. <laughs> that's that's the problem. Hello, uh, Don and Mike, JFK. Hey, yeah, Hello. Were looking for, you were looking for a visual for the Oprah Winfrey? I caught a little bit of it. And I hold was on, hold on. The visual what? for who? The, uh, I'm sorry, for the visual for the Jerry Lewis? Yes, they're off, they're often mistaken. <laughs> Oprah and Jerry. Well, that, that was my thought. I was just thinking I was watching a black and white Oprah Winfrey show. <laughs> oh, no. No, listen, Jerry makes Oprah Winfrey, and I mean this. She makes o Oprah Winfrey look like uh, like Winona Ryder. I mean, Jerry Lewis is so off the scale. I mean, really, I'm not kidding when I say Jiminy Glick. I've got one of the most obscure references for what Jerry Lewis looks like in the movie Pulp Fiction. I think it's the movie Pulp Fiction. At, at some point, a guy's watching a cartoon that has the clutch cargo mouth on it. Yeah. And that's what Jerry looks like, that character, uh, the, the, that the Asian character? character going, oh, yes, we are going to, oh, yes. Jerry, there, Jerry has gone to the next level of being fat. Where and He's not he, fat. He's all, he's, he's bloated. He's right. fat. It's, he's it's, fat. But it's because of the drugs. But Mike still. Yeah, I know, but it's still goofy. But still. And right. still, even if you're just bloated, shouldn't you be able to go 20 hours without eating a popsicle on camera? <laughs> <laughs> and we do have the woman, he demands his popsicle. <laughs> but he is to the fat. point now where he's wearing a tuxedo coat. But he's it's riding up in the back, you know, right, the way fat right, guys co coach right, right. He doesn't even take the time to pull his coat and down. Right. His shirt. Oh, now on on Sunday night when this began, does he wear the t he doesn't wear the tuxedo tie no, at all? No, he wears a, a tuxedo jacket. Right. And he had various shirts that were made identical, but except for color. They had uh, the the things on the on, on the Cuffling. sleeves for cufflinks, and he had them unbuttoned, and there were. A bunch of buttons that go about down to his breast line. I counted 14. Right. And, yeah, Rob counted the buttons, which I thought was odd. <laughs> you spent 20 hours looking at the man. You think of things to do. <laughs> but he's just, beyond the fact that I'll give him the benefit of the doubt that he's not feeling all this medication. Yeah, well, it's, it's part looks, of it, yeah. He looks awful. And the thing about this telephone this year is it the fact that it wasn't so much about... Jerry's kids, mm -hmm. and it wasn't about raise money for MD. Was it Jerry's health? No, it was a tribute to Jerry. Oh. And there's there's a, there's at least one or two moments that I that I have to pull out and play for you where they had a kid from Baltimore, and you know this kid is a well trained little little actor that when he gets up on the jumbotron, right, and, and Jerry is says, "And oh, you go to Baltimore, you Maddie." Maddie or with your Marty, whatever his name is, his little kid starts giving a Marty starts giving a speech. <laughs> Marty starts giving a speech, but it ends up being Jerry, you're my hero. Jerry, we're all here because of you, Jerry. Uh, Jerry, you are the greatest, and that oh god, that's the moment that it clicked when I went when I made like my eighth phone call of the night direct to Rob's house. <laughs> You know, and Rob, we should just get an open line now. We should have that deal where we don't have to actually dial each other. I've been other. saying it for years. You just pick it up and it's an open line because I, I call him up and I Use say, Dixie cups. You guys look it's, close enough to each other. It's just Jerry. It's all Jerry. All the people that they have parading out who are... So, and, you know, they bring these people with the with this illness out. They parade... And I, and I dig this. I know what they're doing. They parade them out. Right. For sympathy. So you feel bad. So you call to help this worthy cause. And... Without fail, everybody that they called out to tell their sad story started with their sad story, but immediately went right to, and thank God for you, Jerry. Yeah, and they're, they're coached. And Ed, towards the end, has some great Ed moments when he says, this is the best telethon ever on television. 
<laughs> Jerry. All right, so we've got. Listen, How are you, Jerry? We've got uh, plenty of that. Good. We've got uh, a chance of rain. Yeah, wow. through tomorrow. Look at how dark it is outside. Yeah, it's raining again right now. It's amazing. As a matter of fact, no Washington D.C. area. <laughs> I think we just say in the metro area now. Or, or I think we just say here. Yeah. Because anybody listening to us is here. That's exactly what we could say. Raining here. We're we had a great time here. <laughs> we're here. We and from Fairfax and I we're found, here. We're queer. We're not going skiing. I found out one of the real beauties of WJFK Radio. Really? One of the reasons that this is really the most bass backwards radio station in the world. Mm -hmm. When Frida and I drove uh, Bart uh, to Clemson, and then we made the trip back a couple of weeks ago, uh, and I'll tell you in depth about that trip and and just really what a fantastic person behind the wheel my wife can be, what a help she can be mm -hmm. with finding alternate routes. Right, but. As we were making this drive back, we're noticing, you know, if you get in your car and you drive a, the other way around the Beltway, the towards the Maryland way, you get over by Connecticut Avenue and then you get over by 95, and like JFK sounds like this. Well, and we were saying that we were going to, you know that, right? The signal goes the wrong way because if you get going the other way on 81, I picked this station up. An hour past Winchester. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible out there. Wow. We're, we're coming back from from Clemson, searching f for anything on the radio to listen to that that wasn't either religious or. <laughs> <laughs> you can, it's loud out there. Yeah. It really is. And all of a sudden, I, I heard the day little sounds of. Hasn't Pat gone? Taking your calls. <laughs> Why would you call me with that type of question? I said, Frida, of course you should sell the car. I said, look, look, the sign says we're 147 miles away, yeah. and we're picking it up. The sig Someone should go to that gigantic tower thing and turn it the other way. <laughs> yes. It, it would be a brilliant idea. It's going the wrong way. <laughs> All these rules. Jesus Christ. Just have, uh, you know, Wendell shimmy up there. <laughs> I'd pay for that. I could get him to do it. <laughs> I, would, I would pay for. I know you could, but then, but then, Mike, that would be on your hands. <laughs> That'd be it. I'd, I'd be an enabler. That that death would be on your hands. I'm going to get turned over. I'm going to fall. I'm a bird. <laughs> I'm flying through the air, sir. You know if you can do that to get him up there. <laughs> just hide a six pack up there. <laughs> or don't even hide a six pack. Just, right. just tell him there's a Got six pack. Up there, absolutely. See where those red lights are? Be down in a second. There's <laughs> a six pack of Miller light up there. Here I go. Watch how fast I can move. <laughs> okay, now, uh, Rob, I, I forgot about the contest. Do we have a winner on Secret Sound, or have we Joe given up on no, that? No, and I don't think we have. Then pull them out. Wow. All right. They're, they're back oh, there. I pull did. it out. I had to pull them out. Go ahead. Let's see if we can give away this money, this uh, this 500 bucks. 877-365-3636. One head. Don't have to say that, Rob. We'll get it to a local winner. <laughs> Not necessary. I right? know, but it's funny. 877-365-3636. Call 100 right now. Good luck. 342. We'll be right back on JFK. You're listening to 106.7. Ugh. I hate that guy. Don't we have any with the new guy? <laughs> the old guy, you that's mean. The, that's the only yeah. guy we got? No, this is the new guy. This is... Did I say old yeah, guy? Yeah, you said, don't we have any with the new guy? And I, I said, we, you mean something sorry. with the old guy? I meant the other guy. That's all we've got. That's all we've got. 106.7 WJFK. Where's some of the old guy on it? Rob just went running out of the studio to fetch something. Let's see. NASCAR Winston Cup Race. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 343. And do is, uh, does uh, Car County have yeah. longer traffic there now? You go. Yeah. Here you go. Be right back. WJFK. Try number three. Working great now. Wait a minute. Well, at least this is. You know, hey, you know what's better, too? What? <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to like root for anything, but man, it's fun because all these mistakes and stuff. Everybody hears everything. Yeah, I know. You know, a lot of times when we really screw up, you can only hear it. You know, now it's now. When they, well, I guess everybody could hear it locally anyway. Yeah, but we didn't screw up as much. Well, because it was well, because now there's more stuff. I mean, before it was just simply you hit that one 
the, yep. the, the green button, right. that would go... <laughs> this is the Don and Mike show. And then, hmm. then the rest of it would just go. But now yeah. i got to do Maybe it. This is i got to do it. So hold on. It's a 344. We'll be right back. WJFK. And now... Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Give me another chance. It's quaint. I've been. In, I was talking with somebody. I'm proud to tell you that uh, I believe. What well, September? So this is the month. Uh, I started when I was 14. So uh, today I begin my 30th year. Oh God! In radio, right. working full time. Wow! My 30th year, and I'm celebrating today with the worst board work you've ever heard. 344. <laughs> WJFK. And now. I miss this more than anything. Me too. Don and Mike endorsement copy, 9-2 to 9-7. I'm not supposed to read that part. Sorry. You, you, it, that's, not, that's not actually my cue. That's your line, believe it, it says, or not. Oh, I, when it said Mike O. I know. I Somebody thought, wrote that. That's Somebody your wrote. line. Did, did, now, Rob, did you write this? I did. Did you write Mike O? So that is your line. Is he supposed to say, no, no, it's your line. No. Hold on. It's your line. It starts, it says Don and Mike. his attention. Don and Mike. Oh, so I say Mike. Mike oh, all right. You see, I thought it was rather unusual myself. I thought it. But I pre-read the copy. The first two lines. <laughs> that'd be the first time. <laughs> the first two lines. I go to rehearsal. The first two lines and the first two words are Mike. Oh, so I right. thought it indicated that Mike. And it's one. in both Rhea. type. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just say hi to Rhea. Yeah, as you walk down the hallway, you said hello. Where, are, where were we? Oh. Yeah, Donald. Summer's over. <laughs> Vacation's behind us, and it's time to focus on the task at hand. Doing a great radio show. No. <laughs> Getting people to call 186-SINGULAR. Then we can focus on the show. <laughs> Easy enough, Don. Singular Wireless has great <clears throat> calling plans. I.E. Family Talk that allows you to add a line to your existing calling plan for just nine ninety nine per line per month. Your entire family can share one pool of minutes, one bill, one easy plan, and enough lines for the whole family. Switch so Singular right now. You get a $25 Singular gift card. Good towards phones, accessories, or even airtime. And you can get the Motorola V60 phone free after a $50 mail-in rebate and trade-in credit on your old phone when you sign up for two years of Singular service. Tell them you heard Don and Mike sent you. Restrictions apply. <laughs> blah, blah. And uh, 354, hold on. Now the National Weather Service tornado warning. Oh, no. In Stafford County. Okay. Good luck. Hi to everybody in the trailer park. Uh, current temperature is 79. WKFK. They're not here to make fun, not here to replace. They just want to bring back some memory. Don and Mike. And you know, we had the chance. We were up in Ocean City. Michael Hoover was at the Fenwick Inn. You didn't go see Michael? Nah, I couldn't talk my wife into it. You know, he's just uh, here to make memories. You are a great fan. Thank you so much. Anybody here never seen us before? No, I, I've seen you before. A couple of people. Well, our show is the Memories of Elvis. And now uh, this is a tribute right. to the late King of Rock and Roll. You know, we're not here to make fun of Elvis or take his place right. or anything like that. We're just here to bring you back some memories. Some memories. Some memories. But, and they were all over Ocean City. I mean to tell you, you had that guy who's really, uh, as far as that genre goes, he's the he's one of the regional kings of Elvis impersonator. A regional treasure. You had another Elvis tribute band that was going on on the boardwalk. You had the Jimmy Buffett tribute band. Right. You had the Beach Boys tribute band. Mm -hmm. and the one that sickened me most, the Hot Rod Stewart tribute band. Ew. I never heard of a Rod Stewart tribute band. You missed the uh, the big show in Exmoor, Virginia, which was uh, the Let Me Be Frank With You, Frank Sinatra tribute, and his opening act, Black Elvis. <laughs> you would have enjoyed it. It was wow. pretty remarkable. We had to sneak out. Man, a Frank Sinatra tribute band. Yeah. All right, hold on. Hold on a second. Let me, let me do this. Uh, JFK, hello. Don and Mike show. Caller 100? Yes, my friend. Hey. Now, I hope you, I hope you were listening for the last couple of weeks, because you can, you can win the money and end this contest. I'm going to try my best. We're ready to move on with a new contest. And I, I've got to tell Not you. Not near as much as I am. Oh, really? Yeah, well, I mean, hey, uh, once we get this one over, and once I finish this, then we can go to the next one. Okay, good. I think we'll bring back something like the pay your rent or, or the, Very good. the patch call. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see you won uh, the ESPN uh, Game Plan Prize Pack. Courtesy of ESPN, subscribe to ESPN Game Plan today. Call 1-888-COMCAST. 
And you got tickets to see the Red Hot Chili Peppers with Queens of the Stone Age Saturday at Nissan Pavilion. Give it away, give it away, give it away now. Go to NissanPavilion.com. Are you ready to play for uh, 500 bucks? Sure am. Okay, we'll play you the sound now. Identify it, win the money and the contest. 15 seconds. Mike plucks his musical selection from the envelope, which has not been pre-selected. Mike, are you comfortable with the choice? Yes. Please don't answer until Mike sings like... The Divinals. Hey! Oh! <laughs> Good choice! Caller, name this sound. See, for those, for those of us in the rock and roll college of musical knowledge, we know that Mike will be singing about a topic that's very close to him. <laughs> Again. I'd get down on my knees. I'd do anything for you. I don't want anybody else. When I think about you, I touch myself. Yeah. Yeah. Great song. <laughs> and, and a great rendition, Mike. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> for for $500 and this contest, what is it? It's opening, opening an umbrella that's automatic open. No. 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 <laughs> No! Oh, we're sorry. What is it, the other one? <laughs> okay, all right. <gasps> Thank you. Don't forget that every guest is, is a clue, clue for, you. for you. Mike, it'll do you no good now to write it down now. <laughs> now that you have the answer. Mike has a guess. He's I walking on air. I have my answer. <laughs> Mike is now writing... Closing a... Umbrella. <laughs> Mike, no? it is closing a umbrella. And now we'll see if on tomorrow's show... Anybody that was listening now... Technically, that's not it, though. It's... Do we just want to give it away? Give it away, give it away? Yeah. It's a folding totes umbrella clicking shut. Closing an umbrella, to me, is closing Mike, the actual I agree umbrella. with Rob. Well, I would have given it to someone if they said closing uh, I think a umbrella. Much too generous. A umbrella. <laughs> closing a umbrella. It's a blue one, too. If anyone needs the detail. You better have that detail tomorrow. It sounded blue. I noted that a lot uh, when I was watching... The local TV down at the ocean, uh, watching the Salisbury stations, where, where they just get people, I guess, who were working at McDonald's, and they say, hey, hey, you the Hi. fat... Hi, baby. Hey, sweet pea. They say, hey, you the fat lady, how'd you like to be on TV and do the new news? Right. And they're such poor news readers that it's fantastic that if they have a sentence like, today in Salisbury, a man was hit by a car. Right. The way they read it, and they're obviously just reading, mm -hmm. today in Salisbury... A man was hit by a car. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody's got to start somewhere, you know, and, and I'm sure that lady will slim down and look fantastic. <laughs> Actually, she was the one that was real good looking, very whorish, uh, nice mm. big collagen-y lips. Really? In Salisbury? Yeah, but just but just the worst. Mm. Not as bad as that one girl with the, uh, hey, baby, who's that girl that, I know you don't know her name, but the girl with the bad hair? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't. I don't know their name. I'm, but it's not. Uh, it's not just them. It's the lighting. Even it, it, they. They look like they are in a police lineup. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's not all their fault. Am I aware that they don't have any backlighting at all, and it's no. all just like a big flood on their face? Yeah, and, and oh, there's, it's horrible. There's, there's one woman on on the uh, on the ABC station who looks like she got out of the shower. She has a perm. Right. She was not able to dry her hair. Mm -hmm. So we would watch this lady, and you know, Frida would. Oh, my God, look at her hair. Look at her hair. And then at the end, they would have a little slug at the end that said, you know, Jane Doe's hairstylist, the courtesy of, you know, Buzz Burbank Incorporated. Very good. So here we are. We're back. I'm ready to talk about all of our major adjustments that we've made. You all right? I'm doing it. Now, listen, this is the... And this is a bit of ball busting I'm going to take from my wife. I'm not. I'm, I'm really. I'm, I'm asking you with love. I appreciate it. I said, Mr. Oops. Where are you I at, honey? Ball bus. Where are you at? Are you at the home or are you, are you moving? Are you, are you outside? I'm walking around. I'm, You're I'm, outside I'm, I'm, I'm unpacking from the beach. Um, I crashed on this trip. Uh, and I don't, don't mean my car. I mean, I absolutely had. Emotionally crashed? Yeah, about about my kid going away. For all the uh, talk that I did with uh, Frida about she had empty nest syndrome right. and you know was going to break her up and everything, <laughs> totally the opposite. I wow. I wake up every day with a smile. <laughs> yeah, no, and this was part of our our discussion, you know, because we had every day of this last vacation together, every single day, and when you have every single day together with just you two, you talk about. Everything. So she, um, one day she mentioned, but well, you know, I'm just, and understand, 
My wife loves my son. I know that, and she's the world's greatest mother. But she said to me, do you realize how happy I am? That every day now I wake up and I'm happy? I look forward to getting up. Mm. And why do you look forward to getting up? Because I, I, I do love our boy. But that, uh, this past summer, when he didn't work, when he didn't do anything in the house, he and and he wasn't even he wasn't pleasant a lot just because of the age and I've talked to so many other mothers that are in the same boat. It's just like it was. I was stressed every day. So she's happy that that he's gone. Not that she doesn't love him. No, but I think he's not abnormal. And I've said to her, you know, it's the difference in, in being a, a man. Well, she was one of the prior to his leaving. You had said was. Having all the problems. Well, I was she, having she the was. problems, I think, because, you know, it's one of those things you don't even know until you don't have that stress every day how strung out you were. I'm strung <laughs> out. I've never been strung out a day in my life. I didn't know how it aggravated me to have just the supreme sloppy laziness of <laughs> an 18 year old boy. And this is the difference. Sitting between... around in his shorts. I didn't even know till he was gone and happy and having a good time at college how <laughs> how that picked me up every day. See, the difference between her and me, her and I or her and me, whatever it is that the correct thing to say, is that she, her and me. The thing between her and me is that I'd get home and I'd see, you know, as my son would arrive from wherever he was, he would just drop clothes as he went along. If he was going to change his clothes, he'd leave his pants in the in the foyer. He he would leave his shirt in the hallway. He'd right. see socks everywhere. This would drive my wife nuts. Mm -hmm. Seriously drive her nuts. I'd get home and go, eh, kid's a slob. I'd go up and say, are you going to clean your room today? And he'd go, oh, I don't know. i go, oh, okay. It's your room. It's your big sty. Right. You're moving out soon. So she got very stressed about that, and I didn't get very stressed about it. Uh -huh. She argued with him a lot about it, and... I didn't argue with him about it. No, I gave up arguing because I knew there was, you know, that no, he you would go off. Honey, I mean, well, believe me, for all, uh, every, every time I thought of arguing, I argued a fraction of what I was thinking. The last argument that you guys had, and I want you to know that when I arrived home from the beach, I threw it away so you wouldn't have to see it. The last argument that these two had was something about a scheduling of a class at, at Clemson for BART, something like that. And she was having an argument with him, and she wrote down on a piece of paper all these things that he had said. No, no, I read that to you on the air, darling. You... That was only one thing, because it was so ridiculous. No, there, there, there were four or five things on this yeah. piece of paper, darling, and then you... I wrote it. I know what it said, and I read it to you on the air, and I would have been... Ha if you hadn't thrown it away, I, I mean, I would have said... But I you only said... wrote it so that... Because he would... It would drive me crazy. He, he would... He uh, he got to be good at arguing, and I don't know where he got that from. Yeah, you know. but he it, it, he would forget that he said something so outrageous. Like he got mad at me because I didn't know what the schedule was going to be, and he was mad at me because I was the one who was paying attention at the orientation. Yeah, so so my, my wife had this. Baby, what phone are you on? Because it's it's dropping out like crazy. Oh, I'm on your phone. Hang on, I'll pick up my phone. You know, if everybody would leave that phone alone and let it charge, that phone would be fine. <laughs> I uh, thought we I thought we wouldn't have that. What are you doing in my room anyway? I'm not in your room. <laughs> you do. It's a, you know it's what? a different dynamic. I'm, I'm in my a phone. different mode. And I'm do you notice good. it, Buzz? I do. I do. It's totally great. different. It's like instant yeah. picker. I'm feeling really good having gotten rid of one boy. Don't think that it hasn't crossed my mind how I might really, really feel uh, good. Yeah, to get rid of another boy. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because, say, what guy out there is not listening to this going, man, I want to leave everything to move in with that woman right now. <laughs> oh, God. So, is that listen, right? Well, now, how come you can say something to me, but I can't say it All back right, to you? That is that right. Well, I... is, is that right what you said to me? Yeah, that is right. That you're thinking about how great it would be to, to kick me out? It just crossed my mind what the absence of stress does to your personality. I mean, to one for my personality, a person's personality. Well, I've been trying very hard not to stress you out. I've, I've really worked overtime. I really have. Well, I appreciate that. I've been, listen, I'm, and I'm the one that's going through this crap. And you didn't, you expected your wife would have a harder time than you did. And I knew when I spoke with you, uh, I guess on the weekend, that you were dropping Bart off, that you were... <laughs> you, that, I haven't heard you that down. I'm sad. I, I, I'm thinking, really, ever. He's my buddy. I mean, he's yeah. my buddy. He's my son. 
I knew he was going to go away. I'm not trying to be melodramatic about this. And I'm, Jesus Christ, I'm not trying to be like Kathy Lee, uh, Kathy C. Gifford. But it really hit me. Mm -hmm. uh, it hit me when we got down there and he, and he had his place. And we're moving him in and, and just the general, not indifference on his part, but it was like you know, he's waiting for us to leave, to get out, to go on with his life. And unlike Frida, who argued with him a lot about this stuff, I, I let all this stuff slide. So he's my buddy. He was my buddy. I mean, he made, he made me uh, a, a bunch of CDs, one to listen to on the way to work, right? One to listen to on the way home from work, to get me ready for work, to to you know to to calm me down after work, and made a point of saying a nice stuff, a bunch of nice stuff to me before my left. Before I left, on the other hand, went through the episode called Frida, a cold bitch. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was, and that that whole thing was awkward. So we're coming from different places, mm -hmm. and we and and also it was uptight because we get down there to, to Clemson and. Frida went there 30 years ago, so she's walking around like, like you know, she owns the town. Yeah, you, you, you know, that's just goofy. I mean, you you feel out of it because, you know, I went there 30 years ago, my darling. Things have changed. I don't remember anything. I was just, I was just happy and excited for him and ready to say adios. And, and I was feeling, <laughs> I was feeling, mad. but listen, I'm... I will delve into this later in our next break, some of the things that happened, some of the nutty things that happened. But I think overall, I would rate our experiences being our first time ever with a child, sending him to college, and even with the fact that I went, and using your words now, mental, even though I was mental, I would rate our vacation about... I didn't say you were mental about Bart. I said you were mental about other stuff. I'd say that I... I think you're very... You know what? From what I've read, more fathers feel emptiness more than mothers. Contrary would, to popular belief. That's true. I would say that our vacation was a seven. How would you rate it? I'm... 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 Eleven... I'm having a kind of great vacation. Well, that's got to bode well for you. And eleven. Okay. No, even the Very fact close. that you were down, and I thought that was sweet, but, you know, didn't really, didn't kill my buzz. You know, I still have to love it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, and you'll notice, she's flying. How, how <laughs> many dumb pussy whip things did I do on this vacation? Went, I, I went out and, and walked the dogs with you. We, we walked up to that ice cream place. Well, wait a minute. Wanted you ice told cream. me you'd help with the dogs. You well, no, I didn't. I, listen, here's the deal. I had no problem because we brought the dogs up to Ocean City. When it's say when my wife would say we take care of the dogs, right. to, to me what that means is walk the dogs up by the end of the street. If they take a dump, use a little plastic bag, or otherwise just get them to pee, and that's it. That's taking care of the dogs. Mm -hmm. For my wife, taking care of the dogs is taking them out for a 90-minute walk. Mm -hmm. They need to stretch their legs, darling. Okay, well, that's, to me, not taking care of dogs. Well, that is taking care of the dogs. I'm sorry I didn't clarify that before. <laughs> However, you know, it's fun as you take them right down on the water line at the beach, and then when they take their dump, you know, you get that wave coming right in. <laughs> no. They just no. leave a floater for the next person. You can't <laughs> until October 1st. Yeah, no dogs on the beach till October 1st. Can't even put them on the sand, huh? No. Oh, they love the sand. <laughs> well, a couple of times I went for these... <laughs> For these lengthy walks, and we went on on the bike rides together that we that we had to go on, and and you know we walked out one night, and she wanted ice cream, so we had to you know walk, the seasons of a man's life walk walk down, and it was just and yeah, that's your future. Just she and I, just mm -hmm. Alan with me. Just just you and good me. for you. It's healthy. It's a healthy lifestyle. And I'd like to me. take classes, like you know, I think it'd be fun if we took a couple's massage class. No, or, no, you no, know, no, no. You could choose a class. I mean, you could. It could be yoga, couples massage, dance, you know, I, or, or it could be an about, academic class. How about we join the NRA together? <laughs> and, and then we can go to the range together. <laughs> we, can, we, we can practice shooting guns together. We it's like American like Beauty. <laughs> I fire a gun. <laughs> See, you go, you, know, you go to a yoga class with me, maybe I go to uh, Las Vegas with you. It, it, you know, I recommend it highly. Yeah. <laughs> no, Mike, she knows you were there. We're going to hear about it. <laughs> Mike had a great time in, in Las Vegas. All by myself. Well, no, I want I mean, it's by, by design. It was great. Maybe, uh, I guess I'll talk more in depth about this. I, I don't think there's anything that you even have to give a rebuttal to. I'm going to talk about our drive down there, our, our, our incredible drive back with those, with those directions. Uh, some comments on on the local people down there. Our our teary breakfast with with Bart. Uh, our dog dogs going nuts. I guess that that's about it. All right, Chiggy, I'm gonna go grocery store. Oh, but I will tell you this: the, the saddest moment that I had, and I am not proud of this. It was just maybe what day was it with the bird? Was you got 
all these so-called f- fans that come out here and say they're Cub fans that are supposed to be behind you, ripping every f- thing you do. I'll tell you one f- thing. I hope we get f- hotter than f- just to stuff it up than 3,000 f- people that show up every f- day. Because if they're the real Chicago f- fans, they can kiss my f- ass right downtown and print it. They're really, really behind you around here. My f- what the fuck I should do? Go out there and let my players get destroyed every day and be quiet about it for the fickle dime people to show up? The mother don't even work. That's why they're out at the game. They ought to go out and get a job and find out what it's like to go out there and a living. 85% of the world's working. The other 15 come out here. The playground for the Rip them, rip them like the players. Hi. Got guys in their and them people boo. Yeah. That's the Cubs? My. <laughs> this is our manager. Our agent. Before the show's today. talk about the great support that the players get around here. <laughs> I haven't seen it this year. <laughs> Yeah. Don't my show. <laughs> Washington. Our number is 877-365-3636. You can also call 1-800-636-1067. Or by our super double secret Washington, D.C. number. 202-463-1067. So please, don't call us. Hey, thanks, Don and Mike. Stellar job today. I'm a fan. Nice. The Don and Mike Show. Back on WJFK. 106.7. See, we had longer time for the traffic there, mm-hmm. and then we, we came right back without that. <clears throat> this is the Donna Mike Show Jazz. It's 4.30, and we're only on WJFK today. Now, I was looking at the local radar, and we are very, very near the end of civilization. <laughs> it's rain tonight, tomorrow. It's uh, 77 uh, right now. Uh, well, I see, you know, every once in a while the phones start, right start, now. Start, start to ring. Every once in a while they ring. They ring a lot on this show. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of them are <laughs> for people who are hearing a tape today. Uh, Hello, Don and Mike. Hello? Hello, Don and Mike gone, WJFK. Hey, we're sorry that we uh, don't have you in Sacramento anymore. Well, we don't know if that's a, a forever thing or not. Rob feels the exact same way. Uh, alrighty. Alrighty. We miss you. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> That's why God invented Hallmark. Yeah, I'm hoping... Send a card? Yeah, send a card. Send a card. <laughs> Hello there, uh, Don and Mike show on, on JFK. Hello? Hello? Yeah, 106.7. Hello? Uh, yo, I was just uh, calling to complain that you're not on 94 anymore. You pardon me? I was just calling to see what that uh, 94, if you're ever coming back or not. 94 what? 94? YSP. 94. Oh, 94 YSP. <laughs> Nope. Yeah, nope. That's what I figured. Yeah. Nope. No. Well, this sucks. Now I got nothing to listen to at work, man. No, listen. I, I take that back. You have a a great radio station that's programmed by one of the finest minds in all of Philadelphia radio, let alone the entire state of Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. And I dare to say, right now, you're probably listening to a block of. Oh, I'll hang up on you. <laughs> you're listen, listening to a to, to a block of of, of some really really. Great up tempo rock music. And everybody's related to the guy that's playing the music. <laughs> <laughs> and we're less than 90 days away from AC December. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're walking a tightrope today. Yeah. Walking a tightrope. Just so you guys know, <laughs> listening to us on JFK, and you're the only ones listening to us, <laughs> there are obviously a lot of topics that we'd like to discuss today. We're not. We're not doing that. We're choosing not to. We're choosing not to. We've not been ordered not to. Although God knows there have been threats made. Yes. There have been. You know, there's always... I'll say this about this place. (laughs) They're consistent. No matter who is in charge here, they're very consistent. Very consistent. And I think through experience, we've learned how to deal with the situation. And I think we're doing the best job we can. Yeah, I mean, we uh, we knew this was going to happen today. We still love coming in here and doing the radio show. Yeah, we knew this was going to happen today, and we knew that that what was going to happen, like with us being taken off Westwood One, at least TFN, was going to happen. We just didn't know that it was going to happen at 1.30 today. Yeah. and We we should have. Yeah, we should have. We should have known. Well, now... I called you last night, and we didn't have the plans in place last night. I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking about we just should have known it would happen like that. Because <laughs> that's the way they always do it. 
<laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show, because we're important, Mike. Yeah. Hey, Don and Mike, how you doing? Hi, we're doing great. Hey, did you see that uh, news clip about the guy that was supposedly forced to rob a bank and had the bomb around oh, his Oh, uh, listen, maybe the greatest and most horrific tape I've seen, there's this a guy, Ohio, something like that, I'm not sure where. Pennsylvania. Forgive, forgive me, same thing. It's not here. There, there, yeah. There's a guy who went into a bank and had a sign on that said, I'm, I'm robbing you. And, and, he, and he also said, he said I, I'm, uh, somebody uh, put a bomb to me, strapped a bomb. Like dynamite on him and stuff? So the cops, what they did was they put this guy in the middle of the street, and they handcuffed him and put him with his handcuffs behind him, and then the cops all moved out of the way, yeah. called the bomb squad in. And they thought that he might be nuts, and that he might be the guy who's, this might be a ruse, that he, right. he's robbed the bank. Yeah. He's a pizza delivery guy. Well, as it turns out, this is all ca caught on camera. They pixelated out so you can't see. The guy's sitting on the ground for about five minutes. <laughs> and it's like that movie with Rutger Howard. And he blows up? The guy's head blows off. Oh, my, oh God. my God. The guy, oh. the guy's head blows off. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And it was, and, and the guy was an innocent guy that they had, uh, hey, what, what did, they, did they know yet or what? No, they don't know anything yet. Wow. How are they going to answer him? His head, his head blew clean off. Jesus. Apparently, apparently he was a pizza delivery guy and he claimed that they forced him to go in and rob the bank and then he blew up. Well, I would figure that the fact that his head blew off would probably lend him a little credibility. Mm -hmm. Bingo. <laughs> All right, see you later. Goodbye. Uh, okay. The, the, the rest of the vacation for me, you, you, you've heard part of it. The, the, the part with uh, the Frieda. Frieda, hold on. Here's a joke from Rob. Good one. The bomb was set to blow up in 30 minutes or less. <laughs> uh, there you go, pizza delivery, Joe. Thank you, Rob. Yes. So here's the deal. Rob can find comedy in, in the most horrific of situations. Yes. Oh, and look, my wife got mad at me. Don't don't just rat him out. I laughed the first time I saw it on the news. Really? When I saw the guy's head blow off. Because they pixelated enough that you can't see it. Mm -hmm. But it's like, hey, listen, yeah. hello, cops. Hello. You got a guy that says he has a bomb attached to him. You look at the situation and you see obviously, okay, the guy has a bomb attached to him. Mm -hmm. What the cops did, at least according to the news reports I saw, they just all ran. They also like, let's make the perimeter After like after they cuffed the guy? Yeah. Let's make the perimeter like <laughs> two hundred yards. Where where did this happen? Does anybody know where this happened? Ohio. Oh my god. Pennsylvania. I can't believe so they cuff they they get close enough to him to cuff the guy. And then, and then they run away. Yeah. While they're waiting for the bomb squad. Unbelievable. And then, and then the guy's head goes, goes boom. So, um, uh, listen, it's last, I, I don't know how over long it was ago that we left. The, the, the day that we left, the Friday that we left. It's, it's about a nine-hour drive via MapQuest to go from here to Clemson, North right. Carolina, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. So we got in the car, and uh, it was interesting. It was my wife and I in, in my car and my son in his car. And, you know, we were playing that game, trying to keep up with him, because... He cruise along pretty good? I'll say it's one great thing about going to North Carolina and South Carolina. There are parts of I-81 where the speed limit is 85. Wow. Where it says it on the... On the sign. Speed limit, 85. I'm saying... Wow, I didn't know that cool. existed. I'm, I'm, saying saying to, I'm saying to Frida... You gotta work to get a speeding ticket here. Cause I got the baby. Man, I would too. I got it at 95 on cruise control, and there are uh, people that are giving me the high beams like, hey, sure. move the F out of the way. Uh, and my son was taking advantage of it, so, you know, he'd be absolutely like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, 50 car lengths in front of us. Right. And I can't imagine how. 81, huh? I can't imagine how fast he'd be going. And Frida said, well, look, you're going 97. Mm -hmm. I said, well, God, he must be going. What? A hundred and seven. <laughs> wow! You know, so it was a great, it was a great race getting him, getting him down there. Uh, and, and eighty-one was a much better way to go down south than ninety-five because you go around Charlotte rather than through Charlotte. Right. We got him, we got him down to, to the to the college. And the very first night we had a hotel room, mm -hmm. and we had a, a room at like a Comfort Inn or something, which is the nicest hotel in town. And they said you have a suite. And we said, that's great, because we got an 18-year-old kid. He'll be sleeping with us for the night. And, you know, we all don't sleep in the same bed. Right. Uh, the suite was a, a regular bedroom. Mm -hmm. And then outside that, you had a, a fold-out couch mm -hmm. and, a, and a little table and chairs. Right. So it was, for those standards, it yeah. was 
the nicest room in town. Yeah, I, I experienced the same chain, as a matter of fact, on my holiday. And uh, we spent the first night with Bard, who was antsy. You know, we got down there and... and did you meet Red, the Red Root Bobblehead? I did not, Mike. <laughs> I did not. Although he did tell me to tell you something. Oh, thank you, Red. Hi, Red. It's Red, the Red Root Bobblehead. Oh, so we get him down there and... The first day that it really got hairy was Saturday, because Friday night he was forced to spend the night in the room with us. We had dinner in. There was a football game on. He and I watched football. Frida Red does whatever she does, did, did or, or does. And Saturday morning we got up, 9.30, rousted him, said, okay, this is it. Moving day, going to move you into your dorm. Went over there, expected to, it, to be an all-day proposition. We got everything out of the cars, uh, moved everything up to his room, in less than two hours. Good. And he's got a nice setup. He's got like a loft bed. Uh, and of course, it's a computer. And they got a TV. And they got a microwave. And got a little mini refrigerator. And a little mini refrigerator. And they got the, the PlayStation. Incidentally, uh, of all the appliances in his room, uh, from my collegiate experience, um, the mini refrigerator is the most important. So we. Uh, Thank you. We, we, we spent some time with Thank him. Thank you, Rob. Thank you for incurring. <laughs> we had to go visit uh, Frida's uh, cousins who live there. They're about 70. Right. And this is where I really saw. A, They're about 70 years old? Yeah. I saw a different side of, of my son. Because, well, one of them is the. I don't know, the brother or sister of a cousin of Big Frida. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Whatever. I, we just had to make an appearance at their house right. to say hello. And Bart, of course, it's about Saturday, about 3 o'clock. He's ready to get to his room and, and just have us the hell out of his life and the whole way over there he's saying i don't want to go how long do we have to stay i don't want to go but as soon as we get there and we open the door boom it's a different kid it's like eddie haskell he turns on the charm he says hi it's so nice to see you uh -huh. it's he's like making eye contact and shaking hands and i'm looking at frida going is this the same kid? <laughs> oh, and also, I got this. Uh, then you hate that, don't you? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I know you do. Yes, I do, because even though I, I miss him... Because the difference is you'd walk in and shake hands and say, I don't want to be here. <laughs> no, no I'm, I'm polite, but I didn't right. bitch the whole way over there. It was just something we had right. to do. Right. I said, okay, we got to go see Mommy's cousins. Right. we got to go see the cousins. Uh, I got a phone call. I didn't get the phone call. Um, my wife got a, a phone call from my son's girlfriend's mother mm -hmm. who was crying about the fact that Bart was leaving mm -hmm. saying what a great guy he was and how helpful he was yes and <laughs> my wife's telling me this is what Bart's helpful <laughs> and she said yes the, 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 my son's girlfriend's mom said like when she would come home from the grocery store Bart would insist on carrying all the groceries in of course now that's got to piss you off a little bit this is the same kid that <laughs> You know, when we go to the store, if he was not sleeping, he would not even get out. I mean, a lot of times he'd be sleeping. We'd leave him outside in the hot car. Mm -hmm. We'd say, we're home. He'd go, oh, I'm sleeping. We'd leave him in the car. Mm -hmm. uh, then <laughs> then her, her father called. You, you'd roll down the windows, though, right? Her father, well, <laughs> occasionally. Her father calls and says, what a great guy Bart is. It speaks How helpful. Yeah. And, and says, thank you for taking such great care of, of, of my, my daughter. And right. You're a great guy. And I'm saying to Frida, as we're walking out of her cousin's house, I said... You are a great guy. I said, you know, between this, between seeing this other side of him yeah. and, and the girlfriend's parents, I called, where's this kid? I don't see this in our kid. <laughs> All we get is the, the constant tone of, what? That's his tone. Like, we're wasting his time somehow. Hey, bud, what do you think? Do you want to go check out that room? I don't know. How long do you want us to stay? Whatever. What are you going to do tonight? I don't know. You know. Meanwhile, he's he's Mr. Charm with everybody else. That's so, right. So the first night, we leave him alone. We go back to the hotel room. This is Saturday night. Saturday night. He's out at some fraternity party or something. Sure. And that's that's the night that I lost it. I just. I mean, I, I spoke to you on Saturday. <laughs> And yeah, and also great timing with this place. I just want to say. Mm, you were down. Great timing. We are seriously moving my kid into his room at college, which for me was a traumatic experience. Yeah. And I had told everybody, don't call me, mm -hmm. you know, unless it's absolutely important. <laughs> <laughs> moving the stuff into my cell phone rings, and I see it's our agent. Right. <laughs> and it was our agent calling me. And the first thing I picked up, I said, I said, don't call. He said, well, uh, yes, I know, but um, 
They canceled you in Philly. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's mm -hmm. you know, great. Call Mike. Right. Please call Mike. Don't call. Don't call me. So I'm, I'm, you know, going through all this crap, and I, I just that Saturday night in the hotel room, I just sat there and, it was, and she's like, "What's wrong with you?" And I said, "I, God, he's leaving, and, and I miss him." She said, "But don't worry, we're going to have breakfast with him tomorrow morning, mm -hmm. 7 a.m. on Sunday morning after his being out by himself for his first night of college." Mm -hmm. So we got up at six, we leave the, the Comfort Inn, we go over to his dormitory, I get inside, I'm on the out of the one because I don't want to wake up everybody else at seven o'clock on Sunday morning. Right. Bart. 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 Finally, I have to go. Hey, Bart. Got to hear from the other side of the door. God damn it! What? It's my wonderful son. I said, "Hey, it's me." What? Mom and I are ready to go. Oh, I said, hey, listen, if you don't want to go, I'm saying this into the door and I'm whispering, if you don't want to go, it's okay. If you're tired, it's okay. We'll go. That's so yes. sad. No, uh -huh. I want to go. I want to go. I said, all right, I'll be standing out here. Uh -huh. So I'm standing outside this door in this hallway. <laughs> How long? And I am not, I exaggerate or no, I'm not this time. Ten minutes. I'm waiting for him. Finally, again, I go, hey, bud, come on. Dad, I'm getting my clothes on. I'm trying to say, wake up my roommate. Finally, the door opens. There are bags under this kid's eyes. <laughs> I, I can tell he had a night to remember. I, and I said to him, wow, you look rough. If, if you want to just go back to sleep, you can go ahead. It'll be okay with Mom and I. No, I want to go. Let's go. So that was the response. We walk down in silence. We get in the car. Frida starts with her Pollyanna stuff right away with him, like, so what did you do last night? Did you meet any nice people? What did you do last night? And he's just not saying a word. Yeah. Right. We go to Waffle House. <laughs> because. Uh, because it's there. Clemson. And there's, there's a Waffle hey, that's House. That's the whole, that is the whole seaboard, man. That's all, that's, I mean, that's everywhere. There's a Waffle House everywhere. So we go and, and after not wanting to go and saying he wasn't hungry, he had and you can tell that, it, that the, the change has already happened with his money and our money. Yeah. Being as we were buying, right? he ordered everything mm -hmm, sure. on the menu. Had a gigantic, it absolutely, I was waiting for the heart attack as he's having the meal. Uh, said maybe five words the entire time. Wow. And I was trying not to get mad and not to get bummed out. Right. I would say like, so you excited about the beginning of school? I guess. So, um, Mom and I think uh, we might take a different way back home. Yeah. That's the response I'm getting from this kid. This is about 7.30? It lasts until about 8. We took him back to his room. You know, <laughs> to his waiting bed. Took him back to <laughs> Where he'd be till 2 in the afternoon. <laughs> took him back to his dorm and, and, and let him off. And it, and it was not the emotional no. send-off that I had planned. Do you think if you had to do it again, you would have gone for the send-off when he went out to his party on Saturday? Well, here's the thing. I said to Frida that I didn't think that we should have pushed the Sunday morning fight. Yeah. And she said, well, he wants to. And I'll say this. Even as I was knocking on his door and he was yelling... He said he wanted to do it. He said he still wanted to do it, but it was like an obligation. Right. So he said, I love you. He said, I love you. He kissed Mom. I reached out, shook his hand. Got out of the car. Dad said he's gone. And then it hits me. It's just she and I again. <laughs> it's, like, it's like 1981 all over. It's just she and I. And I make the colossal mistake of taking my wife's advice. She said, I heard there's an easier way to get back home than 81. You take 29. You know Route 29, the same Route 29 that turns in, into Arlington? Yeah. That's the same Route 29 that runs all the way down to North Carolina and South Carolina. No traffic lights on that one. She says, so let's, so let's do this. Well, okay, bingo. Bingo. As we're driving through S-hole after S-hole after S-hole of Fred Sanford and Sons, I'm not kidding, nothing but garbage dumps everywhere. Right. I mean, the, the main the, the, the main business in all of these communities was running salvage operations. That's and auto body, probably. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. same thing. So we're driving by, and we would just, and everywhere it was, you know, speed limit 25, mm -hmm. you know, police enforcement, speed limit 25. 
We had been on the road for seven hours, and we hadn't gotten out of the Charlotte metro area yet. Whoa. <laughs> and at one point, as we were driving through this asshole town, I said something to her, like I said, can you imagine how awful your life would be if you had to live here? <laughs> and she said, don't be so negative. We have all the time in the world. And I said, this route is killing me. She said, well, now we know that we won't take 29 on the way back. Let's just, <laughs> let's just relax. And so she's already starting to feel the freedom. She's happy, and I'm mad because of the drive. And, and then there was another thing, and I had to end up eating an S sandwich on this. <laughs> when I was down in, in, in Clemson and all the way through North Carolina and South Carolina, everywhere you go, every time there was like a, a rip-off 7-Eleven, a Mini Mart, whatever it is, the giant sign would say, Food Store. And I started laughing. I said, well, I guess that you have to dumb it down for Southerners. <laughs> hey, look, there's another food store. Food store. <laughs> Say, I'd like some food. Where food do you think we could store. get it? Let's go to the food store. Food store. <laughs> so, I mean, for 700 miles. And that made you angry? Too. Yeah, but also it made me happy because it made her mad. Oh, it made right. her mad. Oh, so I, I, so the uh, the animated Disney birds stopped flying around her head. Yeah. I would say, <laughs> la, 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 la. hey, look, food store. Food store. She said, I don't see what's funny about that. I said, food store. So finally, we get we get close close enough to Washington that we're starting to get the traffic and we see the signs for 66. And there's a 7-Eleven. And we stopped to get some Gatorade and some water. Have you tried that Diet Pepsi Slurpee? And as we, as we pull up, she says, look at the sign. I'm serious about asking you that. I mean, I know you're telling your story. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a Slurpeeite. Okay, it's, it's just, you know, no calories and it's a fabulous product. <laughs> Got to give them a thumb. You know, when I, I don't say enough good things about Southland. <laughs> Got to give a thumbs up, even though I'm not a Diet Pepsi guy myself. Uh -huh. But, you know, there's not a Diet Coke Slurpee, so I just wanted to go... Bang. We pull up, and she says, well, look at that sign. And I look at the sign, and it's the same sign at every 7-Eleven in the metro area. It says, real big, 7-Eleven. And then, now on your way home tonight, you got to stop and look at the sign, because underneath it, on the red bar underneath, mm -hmm. it says... Food store. <laughs> <laughs> so it was. So her point was basically everybody. Has yeah, it that. was seven hundred miles of me giving her credit right. and me saying <laughs> these people live in S. This might as well be excrement, South Carolina. <laughs> Look at this <laughs> food store. Where can I get some food? I'm gonna go to the food store. Where can I get me a rebel flag? Food store. And so that that was that. <laughs> That was, that was the drive back, and then then the rest of the well, you know the rest the rest was just I was a mess, uh, spending a lot of time with her going through my empty nest thing. Uh, our dog, the clink went nuts. Uh, he's now even more more crazy when it rains and thunderstorms now. Oh no! With the, he used to just ass all over the place, and we and we dealt with that. It was my wife's idea to bring the dogs with us on vacation since we weren't going to have the boy. We'll bring right. the dogs with us. So we bring the dogs with us, and Colonel Clank, when we were up in Ocean City, had some bad weather like we did here, and my wife ended up giving the dog Xanax. Which you've done before, right? No, he has doggy downers. Oh, so this is like people food? Yeah, this is a, a prescription, and this is the, another great thing about my wife. When she goes out walking the dogs, when she goes out, like I said, it's an hour and a half. It <laughs> wasn't stiff in the morning or anything. <laughs> she, just, she just talks to people. And, uh, you know, you're out walking a giant German shepherd and a uh, little terrier, a little, you know, another little dog. People will say stuff like, wow, you got your hands full there or whatever. Well, mm -hmm. you know her. If it was me, I'd just say, go away. I'd say, yeah, I do. But she stops and talks to these idiots. So anyway, one of these guys that she's talking to, she comes home and she says, I just saw a guy out on the street who said that his, his German shepherd goes crazy and, and he gives him a Xanax. And I said, so what, you, you're getting a medical advice for dog out from guys on the street that you meet on the street? So she gave the dog the Xanax when we're having a bad thunderstorm at Ocean City on Wednesday night. The dog was so loopy that as he was walking around, he was actually bumping... <laughs> from, from side to side oh, into the hallway but he was he still was alert enough that he was panting and wanting to get in the bed with us so my wife said I'm going to lock him in the bathroom so we put him in the bathroom the next morning when we went in daddy daycare no maybe think of you Mike yeah we went in the bathroom my German shepherd was passed out 
in the bathtub. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the coolest place. Yeah. He had climbed into the bathtub, and he had that look where he might be dead because his oh. tail his tail was, was absolutely flat, and his tongue was hanging out of the side. I'm, I'm the flattered that you thought of me, though. Uh, you know, <laughs> just at the pass out thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> just like something I might do or what? Because yeah. you know, I'm trying to think if I've ever passed out in the bathtub. I don't know. Well, I might have. And, and so, you know... The dogs were there, and the dogs were always underfoot. And then Saturday we had the uh, big freedom. My mother-in-law has an 80th birthday coming up very soon. She won't be able to hear me tell her happy birthday, but uh, happy birthday anyway. And uh, it was a surprise party, and one of those deals where we had to get her to the restaurant at 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But because it was bad weather, big Frida didn't want to get into a car and drive anywhere. Because there, there was a hurricane warning or a tornado warning or something. And she probably has a legitimate fear of, uh, of doing that with what she's been through with your house getting wrecked and all Yeah, that. and then the skies are very ominous and dark. So as we're driving over there, my, my, my wife and my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law are concocting this incredible lie about why we have to go to Snow Hill to go to this restaurant in Snow Hill, which is 15 goddamn miles outside Ocean City. Why we have to go to this place to go to dinner. And meanwhile, Big Fried has called us a couple times and said, because she just thinks we're taking her out to dinner, she called to say, listen, I'm very concerned about the weather. Just go without me. Just have a good time and go without me. So as we're driving over there in this blinding rainstorm, the three of them are in the back happily concocting these like, okay, now, we're going to say that you heard about it from your friend and that you told Robin about this and that we thought it would be nice and, you know, we're all on this diet now and it has food. And at one point I just turned to them and I said, why didn't somebody just tell your mom... Listen, we know you're afraid of the weather. It's bad weather. But it's a surprise party for you. So get into the car, and we can save ourselves all this duplicity. Mm -hmm. Well, nobody wanted to do this. So we get into the car, and everybody's got their little lies, and they're telling Big Frida about, you know, we heard about this restaurant from our friend that lives down the street. So you weren't happy with the whole concept of the surprise party? No, and Frida's saying to me, as, as we're driving down a road where the speed limit is 55, and it's, and it's raining real hard, and I'm going 40 already because... It's about 15 minutes away, and we've left about a half hour early. She keeps saying to me, hey, slow down. Slow down. Meanwhile, in a driving rainstorm, i got cars behind me that are giving me the high beams like, hey, mm -hmm. come on, pal, mm -hmm. it's only rain. And I, and I feel like one of the idiots that we talk about on the show. Right. Somebody who's going too slow for the conditions, mm -hmm. but I'm going slow because I have to keep this facade up of, <laughs> of getting my mother-in-law to the restaurant by 8 o'clock. So finally, we pull into the general area of Snow Hill, Maryland. It's 5 until 8. Right. And we see the place. Perfect timing. Frida says, oh, you know what? That looks like a really charming area downtown with those shops. Let's go down and look, look past all those shops. Now, at this point, the downtown area is closed. It's 8 o'clock on a Saturday night. <laughs> It's not just so raining. So she wants to time it so you arrive at the restaurant at precisely yes. 8 p.m. Yes. Uh. It's not just raining. It's freaking thunderstorming with mm -hmm. these big, big-ass bolts of lightning. Right. And I go, well, okay, well, I, I think the stores are closed, though, darling. We can probably go to the restaurant. After all, it's 5 till 8. Mm -hmm. Our reservations aren't until 8. And, and then at that point, I feel from the back seat this on my neck. Just she give me one of the... A flick? Yeah. Give me one the, of the fingernail flick, the painful fingernail flick. She give me one of these flicks, and uh -huh. I turn around. I go, I go, what? And she give me another. She goes, just try, just try. <laughs> so now I'm driving through this blinding rainstorm, and I'm about to turn where my wife wants me to turn, and my my mother-in-law goes, that's a one-way street. So I'm about to go the wrong way down a one-way street, and then I said, Are you tempted to like blow the whole surprise? Here's what I'm doing. <laughs> I said, I'm taking you guys to the restaurant now. By my watch, it's three minutes until 8 o'clock. And again, I get that from my wife. Mm -hmm. Because I know her concern is that because the weather's not great, all of the members of the family, some of them may not be there already. Ah. Of the but, you know, TFB. Right. So we pull up in front of the restaurant because, they, again, this is my part of the line now where I'm supposed to say, I'll leave you guys out front the restaurant so you won't get wet, and I'll park my car out back because they didn't want Big Frida to see any of the cars from the other family members perfect in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. So as we pull up at 3 till 8, I say, All right, well, I guess I will take the car around back and let you guys out. And on the way out, I got another one of these. Oh, no. And I said, What? And she said, That's for not going along with the plan. <laughs> the plan? The plan? We're here. 
Right. It's three minutes until friggin' eight o'clock. Your mother has no idea. So <laughs> this is a hey. Now your initial plan was to uh, just tell her to spoil the surprise. <laughs> tell me what, what, what you think of this doctor. As my mother-in-law, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and my wife left the car. And I turned around when I got out of earshot. All the windows were rolled up, and I seriously just went. Aah! I really did. I really, it was just a combination. Mm -hmm. I went. Aah! Had to. Pulled into the parking lot. Went inside. First thing I did, and of course my wife, my my, my mother-in-law was totally surprised by it. Right. Me. Good. Very happy. Everybody was there. My wife came over and she gave me a little hug. And the first <laughs> thing I did was I went. <laughs> just like that, right? Or a on, flick on the neck. Right on, she goes, hey, what's that for? I said, you did it to me in the car. She said, well, you were going to blow the surprise. I said, you mean it's the surprise? We're at a restaurant 15 miles. There's a hundred restaurants in Ocean City, but we got to go to one that's 15 miles away. Because it was a special place. Mm -hmm. Well... That could be debated how special it was. <laughs> I mean, it was it was okay. And you had a fun time after all. Yes, I'd say I had a, a very fun time. <laughs> good. That's I, good. I had a fun time because she had a fun. time. That's important. Actually. And they all had a fun time. And every important had to a think fun of time. others. And the, the last call that I got from my son. Uh, let me see. I guess we, well, I've talked to him since then. But uh, we were down on the beach on Sunday. Phone rings. I go, hey. He goes, hey, Dad. I go, hey, what's happening? He says, uh, not much. I'm going to be pludging a bunch of frats. And, and Frida says, ask him what he's going to do tonight. So I said, Mom wants to know what you're going to do, do tonight. And he said, I'm going to get drunk. And I said, <laughs> I said, he's going to get drunk. <laughs> and then, you know, she's looking at me. And I'm like, hey, I'm just passing along. <laughs> hey. Yeah, that honest relationship with him. The information. Uh, it, one of the things that he told both of us, he didn't hide from her, was that he did uh, keggers, mm -hmm. uh, keg stands. And I had to ask him, what is a keg stand? He said, well, it's where you, you stand on your head, and uh, two guys hold your legs. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they, they put your mouth right up to the keg, yeah. and they, they turn it on, and you just you get as much in you as, as you possibly can. Yeah, I've, then, I've, 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 you know, I've heard of that before. We didn't call it keg stands when I went to school. And I guess because you're on your head, what, the, the beer goes to your yeah. the brain mm -hmm. faster? Yeah. We had another name for it what was your, at American name? University. What was your name? Happy Hour. <laughs> so that's where we uh, coined the term. It was just that, a normal way of ingesting the beer. That's it. I, I miss that. I miss that guy, and it's going to be an interesting time with my wife, who incidentally makes it no easier because even though she's very happy, she she goes to the uh, a website where you, you get some password and you can click and you can see like they have uh, real time internet cameras on the campus. Okay. And so she, she's. <laughs> I go up in the showers or anything like no, that. No, it's like in the general area. I know there's certain websites where that, that are on college campuses. <laughs> no, it's like on the football field in downtown. And right. she'll click it on and she'll just be sitting there and go, "What are you doing?" She goes, "Seems she sees him. Maybe I'll see him." Yeah, I go, see, "She's not over it yet." Yeah. Maybe, well, maybe we'll maybe we'll see him. We watched the game on Saturday. It was they got they lost thirty to nothing. There's eighty thousand kids with with orange t-shirts. <laughs> there he is. We're not we're not going to see him there. <laughs> so that's that's my story, and I'm sticking with it. Very that, good. Uh, you seem to be holding up well. I'm doing okay. Good we, we had a nice, we had a nice vacation. I'm lying. I don't think you're doing well at all. <laughs> and I'm glad, I'm glad to be back. And and that's it. My son's in college now. You seem a little down. I, I'm getting over it, Mike. You, it'll probably take some time. I'm getting over it. Well, he'll be on the show tomorrow when we have our uh, fantasy football draft. Oh, we got it tomorrow. It's well, tomorrow's Wednesday. <laughs> tomorrow's yeah. Wednesday. All right. I tell you, here I am. I have monopolized all this time talking about oh, me, 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 and, and my life and. There's my friend who had some times in Las Vegas. I received more than one call from Mike and called Mike a few times myself. Yes, it's the duality of me. And I'll just tell you that my vacation in, in involved both sides of me. And at one point, the great, you know, part-time dad side of me, yes. which... Uh, which went well for my kids, but didn't go that well for me. And then the me on my own and... Uh, Really giving myself uh, my new nickname, which is Mr. Las Vegas. <laughs> well, in one of the calls from Las Vegas that I received from Mike, or maybe I called you, I don't know, whoever called whoever. I know you spoke to me uh, when I was poolside. It wasn't that one. It was, hotel. it was a later call in which Mike's voice went from <laughs> Major Bill Smith uh -huh. to Telly Savalas. Wow. Yeah. Telly Savalas is our official Vegas. Casino Vegas Atlantic City. So Mike's end goes like this. I don't know, Don. I'm very down. 
I've lost big in the casino. But I'm in Vegas, baby! <laughs> it's Vegas! I've lost so much that they're giving me free room and board, baby! Your room, your suite, your Tom, meals, Tom! Okay, well, baby! I'll be right back. Uh, on oh, and a nice of... trip, I, I will talk about my trip to, uh, to uh, Bitch Gardens. <laughs> WJFK, it's 502. WJFK! And now, oh, uh, weather, rain. Duh. Low tonight, the 70s, high tomorrow, 80. Now, buzz is 75 at WJFK. Hello there. Are you two heading for Las Vegas? Yeah, we're going to score. Oh, well, I hope to score big there myself. I'm mostly going to be doing the slots. Yeah, I'm hoping to do some sluts, too. Yeah, do they have a lot of sluts in Las Vegas? Oh, there's so many sluts who won't know where to begin. Whoa. Hey, buddy, this chick is pretty cool. She says there's going to be tons of sluts in Las Vegas. Cool. It's so nice to meet young men who are so well-mannered. The Don and Mike Show. Listen up, you GM eaters. From Washington, D.C. on WJFK, you can call John and Mike toll-free at 1-877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. Right, right. Did you wash the ass today? No, did you? Please, no back talk. The Don and Mike Show. As we get to the minimum today on WJFK. Yay! It's uh, 513. If you're just getting into your car and hearing us, congratulations. Thank you. You're a member of a very exclusive club. Yes, yes it's your exclusive party today. <laughs> we, uh, we lost about 5 million listeners today. <laughs> <laughs> We yeah, and then the answer to the uh, any of you that might have questions, we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> we no. just came in. We knew something would be going on today. It is, and uh, we don't know. We are. We, we were on the Westwood One uh, <laughs> Radio Network, right? <laughs> but we're not on. They're running a tape mm -hmm. of our show, even though we're live hmm. on WJFK. So we don't know what's going on. We'll let you know. We'll so, let you know as soon as we know. As soon as we know, <laughs> and it, we don't know yet. Yeah. We just know that we're here doing the show, and uh, hey, well, it's like 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's like we're just we're just on WJFK. Sure, and it feels feels good. Why not? Sure, why not? So uh, anyway, chance of rain. <laughs> uh, I gotta fi I gotta figure out a a smoother smoother segue smoother easier way just to into the weather to fit that in. Right. That it, right. It's, but it's going to be rainy all week. And it, it's going to be rainy and sucking on Thursday night for the game, which no one is talking about. Lots of humidity. Everybody is saying, you know, hey, this week is not going to be that, that great. But they're all dancing around the fact that there's this big game on, on Thursday night. And we right. have our draft tomorrow. We do. Yes. And I am woefully unprepared. Oh, and I, and I am so ready. And you have the first pick. And one of my many calls to Mike over vacation was to... Uh... I found out before you let me know. Ah, that's too bad. <laughs> you know, I should have called you. No, I knew Michael Vick had broken his leg. Mm. And, I, you know, I, you guys, I mean, in, in this league, you got to really be up to date. I'll, I'll certainly be looking at the computer tomorrow because in this league... You boys, nothing would make you greater happiness than, uh, you know, Charlie Broyhill and you if I, if I drafted Michael Vick with a broken leg. You could take Champ Pennington. Yeah, I know he's been injured. He's out for the season also. Mm. It's going to be tough for the Jets. Mm. Hey, way to go. Way to go. Thank you, see? But no, but you know what? That's, it's, those are huge stories. What about Jerome you Bettis? Get the, is the bus healthy? Would you take Jerome Bettis? Mm -hmm. Well, not in not With a middle first. round pick? Not With a middle round pick? I don't know. Is he hurt? No. Would you he is hurt. So no, you're he's saying not. he's not. <laughs> Does he retire or something? No. Would you take Jerome Bettis with a middle round pick? The way you're looking at me, absolutely not. What about Michael Bennett? Man, just stop. Both of you, you wolves, you hungry. <laughs> Hold on, wolves. that's a good one. Though. Thank you. That's really a good one. Thank Would you, you take Michael Bennett of the Minnesota Vikings with a middle round pick? No, I'd probably go with uh, Jeremy Shockey. If you had to take, hold on. If you had to take Jerome Bettis or Michael Bennett with a middle round pick, which would you take? Neither. No, you have to take one of them. No, I no. don't. No, no, come on. And that's my position, and I'm no. standing by it. Come on, we're just period. We're just doing a who would you do? Who Jerome Bettis. Okay, so you would have made the right pick. Because mm -hmm. Michael Bennett is hurt and is out. Jerome Bettis has just been demoted to second string. Ah. The bus is second string now. Yes, he is. Mm. And Charlie, mm. did you see that they cut that F.U. guy? 
They they cut they cut the I know you love the Steelers that Fumatu Fu oh, uh, yeah I saw that Fu uh, Fumatu or whatever it's bad. You know, in fairness to me, I am following another sport right now fairly religiously because really this is it's been a long time since my guys have even been in it this late in the season. In fairness to you, multitask. Yes. And uh, no. Multitask. <laughs> well, I know. No. You're, it's like telling you to be into baseball. You can't fake it. You but can't you be into what you're not I, into. But I'm not in a fantasy baseball league. I'm, I do that to humor you. <laughs> but you're, you're in the league to humor I do league? that to be part of the gang. I do that because you're all into it, and it makes it more interesting for me. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I've had a bit of a chest cold. <laughs> I apologize. I'll be uh, coughing a lot. That happened to me like a hundred times today when I was talking to people on the phone. You don't know what to do. No, I do that to make it more interesting because I've uh, lost interest in the NFL over the years. So you mean all these years have just been a charade? You know how I felt about it. I do it because you guys are into it. Well, now, what it's if, the official team sport of the Don and Mike show. What about when you're... That's why I do it. I don't what, want to be left behind. What about when you're... Why do you think Rob does it? Rob's the same way. Rob's made himself a football fan. Rob has made himself a football fan. Dig it now. He digs it now. Well, th you know, don't do it on, on my account or the show's account. I'm not going to sit here and, and, like, not be involved. I like the competitiveness of it. I just can't tweak myself up into su getting super into it. You know, I always talk about the fact that I will, but then it always kind of sneaks up on me. Let me see if I got something for you here. You got me a little uh, little sheet that I can steal? Well, no, something you might be able to use. Okay. That's it. Rob is very generous in buying me a magazine. No, I, I thought it was very kind. I didn't get your mag. I'll be working off of that, and I'll be working off my website that I did bookmark before the vacation. Good. And that is a it is a great website. Uh, I can't. Uh, crap, I'm wasting time now. I can't find the... Uh, I've got some mock draft sheets for you. If you wanted to make a mock draft... Well, you mean with blank, blank spaces? Yeah. No, I don't want that. I'm not going to do that. You don't want that? Give me, like, the players. Here, I've got it, though, for you. Is that, is that got players in it? No, but it has... It, it has everybody's name hey, I'll take that. and oh. the order that everybody is drafting it. Well, yeah, handy. I wouldn't mind having one of those myself. <laughs> you want it? Sure. Okay. This doesn't do me any good. What's wrong with that? It's just got the names of our teams, you know, of our people that are drafting. Right. It says like... This is, this is like looking at Chinese writing to me. <laughs> no, it says very simply. It round, me no good. Round number one, Mike. John. Rob. Bart. Well, I've traded with Bart now, so that'd be me. Cameron, Buzz, Lisa, Jim, Julie, then Bart, then Charlie. Now this won't do me any good at all. Why? Because you have to put the players in there to make it work. <laughs> right. You write in the names of the guys that you think the other guys will take. That is a colossal effort. Uh, well, I'm into it. I know you're. You're totally into it. Do you know how many I've done? Do you know really how much? I, you don't know how much I'm into baseball. Yeah, I don't think you have any idea that I read every single article. Out of every Boston newspaper about about the Red Sox every day, sometimes more than once, that I check it constantly, that I read, you know, every article there is to read, and it's and it's pretty screwed up right now in the uh, in the uh, old hometown. It's messed up. So you I'm into it though because there is a pennant race now. You're going to end up at a titty bar with Tom Gavin. I'm going to end up probably hurt and disappointed, and and paying off another bet, which this year is going to a titty bar with Tom Gavin. And yeah, but I still, you know me, never say die. That is one, I was, that, that picture of my, my nephew who next year will be going to college when he was a baby, had the Red Sox cap and a little balloon that, that they'd cut out and they'd written in there, never say die. And that's what it is. It's what it is. I'll tell you one thing though about the, the Redskins. And I think Danny Warfel sucks. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's awful. But you really found out who was running the team. With this announcement that they were going to get, only going to carry two quarterbacks? Yeah, because isn't Danny Werfel uh, Spurrier's guy? Yeah, and Spurrier is such a hayseed that he doesn't know yet... How you doing? <laughs> he doesn't know yet how to come out and say that the little guy made the decision. Danny made the decision. He doesn't know to, how to say that, but make it sound like it was something that he was in on. Right. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that was a little, little Nick Nolte-ish. <laughs> come on, for God's sake. I'm watching you because I just... Well... I know most teams carry three, but the decision's been made by those that make the decisions, and we're going to carry two, and I don't think Rob Johnson has been injury-prone throughout his career. You know, meanwhile, hello, the guy got hurt in Buffalo, the guy got hurt in Tampa Bay. You know, Bay. it's funny, when you say that, when you say, like, hello, you make that sound like everybody should know that. 
Well, NFL followers know that. The uh, NFL followers know that? Know that he has. Fans? Just uh, fans out there that maybe, like, look at scores or... Fans with penises know. <laughs> oh, there oh. we go. <laughs> now make it a fag thing. They would know. Sure. They would know that Who's he Who's leading the American League in batting right now? Yes. <laughs> Fag. <laughs> you said it, not me. You said it, not me. What's wrong with you? Hello? <laughs> but his whole thing. Well, Bill gonna... Miller. Hello? And Bill Miller is? A hey, Boston Red Sox. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Listen, here's all I do when I follow your baseball, and I yes. do follow it. Yeah, you follow it because you enjoy my pain. I do follow it. And I've had a lot of pain recently. I, I look right here. God damn Yankees. New York Yankees up four and a half on Boston. Wild card standings. Seattle one game ahead of Boston. That would give me great optimism. Okay. Good. I mean, that does. I mean, uh, the wild card. I'm not You're right, because it's actually it. September 2nd. Yeah. And mathematically, they're still in it. Yeah, and Oakland, I don't think... I think Oakland's going to win the West, and I think Seattle and uh, Boston are going to battle for the, the wild card, and I think that is a very good thing, because... The Red Sox are very competitive with Seattle. So I'm watching Spurrier, and and he's basically what happened. What's happened is that the little guy has decided that he like he loves Rob Johnson the way that he loved Jeff George. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if it's the big, strong, handsome type that he goes for, <laughs> but. It's obvious. Every NFL team, and not even a fan has to, not even a rabbit fan knows this. You carry three quarterbacks. But aren't there lots of teams that are doing the two quarterback thing this year? They, there was one other. Team. I thought there were two other teams that were doing it. As far as I know, one other team. Okay. But generally speaking, you carry three. You Just... carry three because in, in the NFL they can go down like dominoes. So I guess this guy Snyder, you know, he calls, he stands up on the on his on all of his phone books in his office, and he's and, you know, so he can be eye contact with Spurrier, and he says, "It's my team. Cut this guy. We're only carrying two quarterbacks." So Spurrier comes out in his conference and goes, "Well." I know about everybody in this league carries three. I'm going to carry two. going to hope they don't get hurt. And they get hurt. I guess we'll have to look at some other options. Now, will they have your designated player that is the backup? That's Lavernius Coles. Okay, he will be the third stringer. Third string quarterback. Right. So good luck. Good luck. Nice, nice knowing you. And they still wear those goddamn patches. Well, who do you patches? think I should go with in the uh, first round uh, since uh, Michael Vick is out and he was the everybody's consensus to be the number one draft pick? Who, who do you think, uh, who That's, appeals and, to you? Uh, do you want my honest? Why don't you give me three? Ricky Williams? Yeah, everybody's been telling me that. Ladan Ladanian Tomlinson? That one too. Billy Volek. <laughs> Billy Volek? Who the hell is Billy Volek? <laughs> He's the backup quarterback in Tennessee. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. It's it's going to be one of those you know drafts where I have trouble pronouncing names again. Don <laughs> Nick Welcome back. Hello, hi. Hey, welcome back. Hi, thanks. Uh, Ladanian Tomlinson. Ladanian. Tomlinson. Ladanian. Ladanian. Ladanian Tomlinson. Oh, and you know I'm nuts with the Madden 2004. I'm nuts with the Madden. They've got this thing called owners control, where you can take over a team, mm. and I've taken over the Redskins. And I've lowered ticket prices. <laughs> and I've lowered... The, it, it's, it, it's got so much detail, it's freaking incredible. I've lowered the prices on beer, <laughs> concession, all concessions. I've lowered the parking prices. I've torn down part of the stadium. <laughs> to do what? To add on to the scoreboard. Ah. You know on the scoreboard at, at FedEx, it's, it's got that tiny little scoreboard. And then, of course, we've got all those ads yeah. on it. I've just taken all of the ads out <laughs> and made the screens real big and long like they are in Baltimore. Well, you're popular with the fans, but your team is hemorrhaging money. <laughs> yeah, that's $21, $21 million over the salary cap are right you now. Really? Oh, that's bad. That's wow. fantastic, though. I love that, man. <laughs> that's too much. Very good, Rob. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike. JFK. Hello. Hey, Don and Mike. Yeah. Hey, did you hear that, uh, that Dan was... Uh, had put contractors under a, a clause not to say anything about building 30,000 square feet additional onto his home. That included a 12-car garage and a movie theater. I read that. He's pulling a Ken Stevens. Absolutely. <laughs> and the deal is that there's an article in Washingtonian now. Exactly. He's all pissed because everything is public knowledge. Yeah. He's right. pissed that they, they, they have the plans for his house. <laughs> He's not like using guys that... He said we're going to be building the stadium. Or something. <laughs> I don't think we're oh, renovating man. the stadium, sending him out to his house. <laughs> I don't think so. All right, thanks, man. That's Thank a Steve Wynn move. Bye, bye. And Steve Wynn is the king of Las Vegas, baby. <laughs> Former king. 
Book He's not King when the book ends. Now, does he run I just the... read his little profile, but it was the book was released in 2001, so it's a dated, uh, unauthorized biography of Steve Wynn, the guy that built the Mirage Casino in Bellagio, and, you know, yeah, and right. the, the, the guy that ran the Golden Nugget years ago, did all those TV ads with oh. Frank Sinatra. Steve Wynn. Jew or not a Jew? Guy runs the Mirage Hotel in Las Vegas. Jew. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, yeah. Real name, Mike? I believe Wiener. I'm not sure exactly. I forgot if that's in the book or not. I, you know, I'm sorry. We never got to your to your story about Las Vegas. It's not all Las Vegas. Well, I, 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 I Because I had a really wonderful trip with my kids down to Bitch Gardens for a while. <laughs> oh, Bitch Gardens. Is that what I said? It might have come out like that. Yeah. No, I, we took a trip down, um, I guess, what happened to be the most crowded... Um, time of the year at Bitch Gardens and it was uh, <laughs> and the the the, the, uh, you know, the the Williamsburg area. <laughs> Alright, we'll be back on 106.7. It's 527. WJFK. And now the Cunny Car with more watches extended traffic. Have you seen the new intern? Extraordinary. Wouldn't I like to give her the old pork sausage? Hello, Jimmy Dean. Uh, uh. The Don and Mike Show. A lifestyle-oriented program, The Don and Mike Show. 106.7. WJFK, 537. Uh, tomorrow on the show, you know, we're not going to get to all the Jerry stuff today. We'll tease the Jerry stuff, and we'll devote a couple of segments to Jerry Lewis tomorrow on the show. Jerry! It's maybe Craig and uh, our fantasy draft uh, tomorrow. Thursday on the show, joining us in studio... Famous lesbian, and um, she gets my vote for Mother of the Year, Paula Poundstone. Hey, there you go. It's sure to be awkward when she joins us in studio. Not for me. Let's all wear, let's all wear suits. Yes, and, and those weird ties. <laughs> and uh, we'll have our own uh, Lisa down at the mall for this uh, NFL crap. That's very good. The deal was that we, we were invited to go down there. Yeah, uh, Rob called and asked for all these, like, Questions. So here, here's the thing that I that I don't get about this. It, that yeah, I've already commented on the the, the, the NFL um, experience during the week, mm -hmm. which is really no big deal. But for little kids, it's okay. But this concert on Thursday, it's uh, Britney Spears, Mary J. Blige, Aerosmith, Aretha Franklin. What the NFL wants, of course, is the hype machine to get going. Oh, on yeah. So they've offered uh, all of the Infinity stations, HFS, ARW, PGC, us. The chance to go down and and help shill the NFL product <laughs> to take to take the soft loin of Paul Tagliabue between our hands mm -hmm. and rub it, ooh, and and and, and, rub ooh. It, and rub it until it gets angry, yes, <laughs> angry and red and embarrassed. <laughs> and <laughs> I was talking yeah. to Broyle about this, and I said, so uh, what are they offering us? For the opportunity, because we one thing we've learned on this show, though the 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 hard way is that remotes suck. Yeah, and unless you really know who's going to be on your show, they're they're hard shows to do. Otherwise, we're sitting outside in a tent in the pouring rain for for four hours or whatever the show is Thursday, three hours. Uh, they said, well, there's a chance that Britney Spears would come by. There's a chance that Aerosmith would come by. There's a chance that Mary J. Blige would come by. Not thick enough, right? Yeah. You know, there's a chance. And let's say that by, by some chance they do come by. Well, do you think we're really going to get enough time to ask Britney Spears, what was it like tonguing Madonna mm -hmm. at the MTV Awards? No. We're not. They're gonna, you know they're going to come by with their pre-planned, okay, now ask Britney. If, if this is even working on the assumption that they're going to get her for us. Right, yeah. right. Ask her about the NFL, you know, blah, blah, blah. That, the only person I bet we would get is Aretha Franklin, just if we had lots of pies sitting around. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not, we're not going to be down there, but... Coconut cream! But I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, your voice. Can we have a replay on that, Rob? Because <laughs> that was a I little... A cold. Yeah. A little telling, but hold on. That's not little, partying, that's a cold. Right. Not being festive? Hold on. No. Uh, anyway, th no, no. Uh, Thursday, Lisa will be down there, and if and if by chance the NFL comes through with these grandiose promises, mm -hmm. then we'll interview these people via Lisa. Very good, telling her what to ask them. That's you got it, Robbie. Did not record. You didn't. You did not record. Hey, I dodged one there. That's weird. Did I can do it again. Record. Coconut cream. <laughs> yeah, but you had like a. <laughs> yeah, I know. I had a band. It didn't come by the second time. Yeah, <laughs> having. Okay, uh, enough of that. Your vacation, please. 
my vacation started out, uh, the very first thing I did uh, was to take my children down uh, for a little vacation, a little four-day vacation, and I uh, loved my time with them. It's a lot of fun. And I figured um, we'd stay close to home, so we'd stay within driving distance and go down to uh, this garden. Sid's garden. And... Um, I thought it would be fun. Uh, you know, the, the, I think that uh, Rob, who's kind of an amusement park aficionado, had said, hey, yeah, go down there. It's a good place for little ones. And uh, I think it's probably a fine, fine amusement park. I think I caught it at the worst possible time you could. I, I have never. I've heard that's any Ever. Time. Really? I've heard that that's any Well, time. no, I mean, I'm not just slamming the park. If the park was empty, I would have had a great time. It was that s crowded. It was absolutely the most overwhelmingly crowded experience I've ever had exactly. anywhere. And I include like going down to Disney World. While we were gone, Wild World had two more things happen though. What happened at Wild World? What do they call it now, Buzz? What is it? It's not, uh, Robbie, it's not Wild uh, World. Six, six Flags. Six, six Flags. Flags. Yeah. And uh, the power go out. Oh yeah, so we got stuck on the uh, roller coaster. Yeah, well, no, that was, that was before we went on vacation. Right. While we were on vacation, the tower went off at the whole park mm. all day long. Right. There were people that were stuck on rides, and then they wouldn't give people their money back. <laughs> wow. When they were leaving, they would... You know, them. the amusement park thing is is just... And something you know, else happened at Wild World as well, and I and I refuse to call it whatever the new name is. To me, it's always going to be Wild, Wild World. World. When we used to do shows out there, <laughs> those greatest shows. <laughs> That's why we don't do a live show down at the mall. Because That's we to, it. We used to do live shows at Wild World. Well, it is a very frustrating experience. You know, I love crowds. Bitch Gardens. You know, I love crowds. And, and Bitch Gardens <laughs> was, uh, you know, and I and I'm a fan of the Anheuser Busch Company. I, I mean, I like Anheuser Busch beer. I drink. That new Michelob Ultra, that is my my brand of beer now. That's what I drink. So I like the company and all that. Go down there, and we got there Friday afternoon. Picked the kids up in the morning. We drove down, and uh, my kids are just unbelievably good travelers. They're they're just they're, they're just wonderful. And I mean, I just have a blast with them whenever they, you know they have their moments like all little kids. But uh, but they're really they're really good kids. And we got down there probably about one o'clock, one or two, and got to the park. Probably two. I'm thinking two thirty, three thirty, yeah. and parked okay. Parking seemed all right. I figured afternoon, you know, two o'clock, two thirty, we'd be catching the end of the day's festivities. As people, well, no, no, that's not what these people do at Bitch Gardens. <clears throat> at, B at Bitch Gardens, it's just so unbelievably crowded. More people were coming in, and 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 we went over. And of course, you, my kids are at the stage now where they're going on grown-up rides. They're starting to go on the rides that they can, where they don't get the uh, the the height requirement thing that uh, that sidetracks them. So we go in there. Little Miss Lab Dance. <laughs> what? What? No. What, what the hell is that supposed? To be? They were going on adult rides. Adult rides? No, not that kind of adult rides that grown-ups can go. Watch it. Watch it. My daughters, you know. Training broadcast. Hey, no, stop it. No, stop. We go in there, and they have uh, they have the little, uh, it, like, I think it's 42 inches. If you're 42 inches tall or more, you can go on certain rides. And it was, they see the log plume. And we walk around, and I'm beginning to realize just how crowded it is. You can't do anything in here. And we went in, and I said, there's the log plume. What did he write down? What did he write down? <laughs> Tilt a whore. Tilt a whore. No, not, not that kind of adult ride. I'm not sure I like this. Good idea. Uh, so we get there, and the log plume is Black there, of penis. And, and, and it has a two-hour wait. It has a two-hour wait to go on the two hours. I can't imagine anyone that would have the mind to stand in a line for two hours to go down a slide, and, and my kids are cool about it because they say that this is two hours. Take your kids out. They even understand it. Would you stand in line for two hours? I wouldn't stand in line for two hours for anything. Would you stand in line? Did they, <laughs> thanks, Rob. Did they go to the Fleming money shop? No, no that's, not, that's, that's another adult thing. These are my daughters, Rob. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Daughters we're talking about here. Boys. Okay. Johnny, Johnny Wad's wild ride. <laughs> so it was, you know, it was something that I, I just really, I was really frustrated. Ron and Jeremy's <laughs> tomorrow land. Ron Jeremy, that's, that's over at the other place, I think. That's across the street. It was so ridiculously crowded. You couldn't do any. There was nothing 
nothing in there that was available. We ended up leaving, and uh, there, there, I don't think we went on one ride because it was just too crowded. Would you wait for two hours if someone said to you that we will have the, for you the tastiest, most refreshing beer you've ever dr had to drink in your life? I wouldn't wait for anything that long. You have to wait in this line. It was, it, but there were people. The guy that told me it was a two-hour wait was standing at the end of the line and getting ready to last uh, two hours in that line. It was wow. ridiculous. Did you ever take the courtesy shuttle over to the hospitality suite? No, we didn't do any of that. Two free beers? You know, oh, we did do one ride. We did the little uh, the little tram, the gondola that goes like on the uh, cables oh, yeah, that's over the park. That was pretty much it. We we ended up... But uh, that's not a ride. That's a conveyance. It's, that's just it's a conveyance, you. but it was something to ride on. You know right. what I mean? And that was it. When you have two little kids and they've been waiting for two hours, oh, that counts thing. as a ride. I was, and I'm so pissed off because they're not going to want to wait. And, they, right. they, <laughs> and you didn't take them to menstruation mountain? No, stop it! Stop! Stop! Hey, come on. Two guys enjoying this right now. One guy, forget it. All right. <laughs> you said it's all right. Don't forget that. No, it was, you know, I mean, they can go on the grown-up rides is what I'm saying. They can go on the grown-up rides, you know? And so it was. It just starts me off on another happy fall, everybody. <laughs> Here we go, two on one once again. Yes, sir. So anyway, it was uh, it was a drag. It was it was not fun at all. We ended up coming back the next day. I said, well, we'll go to the water park that they have down there at Pitch Gardens, and uh, we will go to the water park. At nine thirty, there were fifty cars in line, and I said, you know what? We're not going to go to the water park. We are actually going to go. To the beach because we were close enough to the beach where we drove down to the beach they had a fantastic time didn't have to wait for crowds i said there's fireworks at the at the amusement park we'll go to the beach all day we'll come back in time for the fireworks which we did they estimated at seven o'clock at beach gardens yeah there were twenty three thousand people in the park at beach gardens wow so after the fireworks were over and we're walking out my daughter said they want cotton candy. We were, we were able to go on a couple of like the teacups and stuff like that. And we're coming out, and there's this line for cotton candy that's a mile long. But they, it's the only thing they wanted. And I said, I'm going to stand in line. And the line was not kids. The line was all grown-ups that are standing there wanting cotton candy. And they give you a cotton candy that was the size of, of this oversized beach ball, which then proceeds to get in both my daughter's hair. And we, we left the park, and I just... I was sitting there going, looking at the people, breathing through their mouths, and, and, and walking at subhuman speed, which is the amusement park shuffle, is what I call it, where people waddle, they go back and forth from one leg to the other, mouths agape with flies and debris catching in their teeth. And I left and I said, goodbye, Bitch Gardens. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. But the nice thing is that uh, at 11 o'clock at night, when we finally made it to our car, yeah. Because the lines were so long for the little tram that they take you to your parking lot, we actually walked through the park, and then you get to the road, and it says, no pedestrians. So you have to walk another mile down, and then take a right-hand turn and get back in, and it was not, not the greatest experience. But they had a good time. No. Through, through it all, they had a good time, and you know what? Then I said, hey, we'll stop and we'll get ice cream. Even though it's late, it's like 10.30 at night, we'll stop and get ice cream. There were three million people at the ice cream place. So I said, well, there's an IHOP next to our comfort hotel. We, we did the comfort, comfort thing. Comfort right. There, there's 70 of them down in Williamsburg when you get down. There's the comfort, gar Bush Gardens Comfort Suites, Comfort Inn and Suites, Comfort Inn rectal hole i mean it's just and i went to three of them because i got lost because the maps that i had the rectal gave, hole is that was that one of the adult ones? that was not one of the adult ones at all it was just uh it was a drag and the best part was going down to the beach because the, for whatever reason the little amusement park they have down in Vir virginia beach was empty and uh it, it was a horrible electrical storm and i know somebody like got killed oh. at the park over the weekend but uh, we went on the during the electrical storm because there were no lines. <laughs> the kids had, and they, they did have a little mini log flume down there, and it was. And they ended up uh, being, you know, they were. They could not have been better. My kids are. Did they like the greatest the, kids in the world? Did they, they really like the are. uterus adventure? They, they, they are. They, they are once again. They, and if you, if you're, you're, these are my daughters. We're talking about. Take your daughters you're out. You're going of to it. piss me it's, off. I'm not talking like about. When I say things about your son, you don't like that. It's but like I'm not you know, talking when you tie about that your daughters. I don't want to today. start the very first show back it's with a so fight with you and your pal back there. Listen, you my know, pal only uh, helped me on two. All right, all stop the saying I don't like those mom. words when I'm mentioning my daughters. Okay, you said mention it when you're talking about adult me. rides. No, it was it was fine. We had, we it was they had they had a very good time and it was it was great. That's it. That's all I had.
That's it. And then I went to Las Vegas, and I had a perfectly good time in Las Vegas. Hold okay, on, we'll hear about Las Vegas when Very we come good. back. No problem. From the bet. Thank you. From the uh, from, I said, from the bet. From the show. When we come Very back. good. When we come back from the break. Yes. On the show. Okay. It's ten till six on WJFK. Good. Oh come on. Okay. Don't be mad. Okay, I won't. It's not it's first not, day back. It's not your daughters. It's the fact that you said. Adult. Race. I understand. Which I understand. Is, is, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. trying to think of one more right now. Yes. Buzz, do you have one off the top of your head? Uh, not right off the top Come of on, my head. Buzz. Come on. Spotlight on Buzz. Well, I had one for Ron Jeremy. I would say Ron Jeremy's Enchanted Forest. <laughs> oh, but you're not mad at him, though. Never. <laughs> okay. I never get mad at him. It's uh, <laughs> 10 till 6. We'll be right back on JFK. WJFK. A little after six on WJFK Rain tonight, tomorrow, and through Friday. Boo! According to Buzz, that's Buzz's new job. Low tonight, seventy. High tomorrow, eighty. Now it's seventy-five. WJFK. Did you really mean what you said up there? Uh huh. I just want you to be happy, Mary. But I'd be happiest with you. What about... Brett Fogg? Bruh. They will make your ovaries rock hard. Don and Mike. It's 01 on 1067 WJFK. The only station we're on today. And maybe forever. You never know. Um... We just got a note from the program director of one of the stations that we used to be on uh, in Iowa City. Oh, yeah. Dennis Murphy calls the station up. Right. Because the station is running a tape, a best of tape, because for whatever reason, I mean, it's September 2nd, something had to happen today. Westwood One is running a best of show, mm -hmm. and we're just doing the show on WJFK. Read into that what you will. We, we don't know fully what's going on yet. We don't have the answers. Mm -hmm. Uh, according to this, Dennis is holding his telephone up to the radio. And, and they're, that's how they're broadcasting that? I believe so. Oh, oh my God. If anyone, <laughs> if anyone from Iowa City is listening now on this pirate broadcast, please call us. You're violating... Oh, who knows what they're violating. It's funny. Do you know at the end of Madden 2004, <laughs> they actually have Al Michael say... That that thing what's that thing you see at the end of baseball? Any reproduction of, of the pictures, description, accounts of the game without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. Yeah, with, with, with EA Sports though, because they don't they don't without the they, express written consent of EA Sports is prohibited. Al Michaels, do you believe in miracles? He is annoying. Oh, and this sound means it's time for Mike in Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah. phase two. Mm -hmm. Phase yeah. two of the vacation. So you, have, you have the night, and I want to just set the record straight. You have the nice time with your kids, even though you're pissed at me about the adult jokes. Well, you know, it's, I, I love them, and, and I, I don't spend enough time with them, and uh, it's frustrating when you're a single father. You know, you want to make everything nice, and, and it's just, uh, you know, you, you try to do your best. And I'm still working that through, and you it's very, great. very frustrating. You know, it's tough to have, I, and I feel for anybody that's in this position, when you don't, have your kids all the time. It's the toughest thing about going through what I've gone through. And, you know, they are... You know, I, I just seriously can't say it enough how much, you know, how much I love them. And they're just great kids. And I think it's been tough for them. And I think it's very, very difficult for that situation. So I get serious when I talk about my kids. Well, and I, I, I always... I love them very much. And we didn't it's hard for me to even, you know, even play, even though you guys didn't mean anything by that. And I think that, that you know... Even when we're going through a time when I, you, you want everything to be perfect, and when it's not, you know, and you, and you just can't deliver, it's, it's even ten times more frustrating. Mm -hmm. And they still don't get phased by it, and they're very resilient. Because they're with you, because they're with their dad. Well, they're very resilient. Doing the best dad thing that he can. And we had a great time. We actually went out on my boat, too, and, and uh, you know, went out and one day when it, there were no people around. It was like on the Monday after that, that, that weekend that was, you know, so crowded, and they're just, uh, they're, they're a blast. I mean, I've had the best summer with them as far as. I've ever had because they just they, they get along so well and they laugh a lot and it's just a, you know they're, they're they're very very good kids and then you know and then I got to give them back and and it's frustrating and so the only way I compensate is by being <laughs> and like you know I think really years and years ago going through another similar problem I went out to Las Vegas for Christmas but this time I just went out by myself and did a junket hold on before you do that yes 
I do want to say, we are sorry that you're pissed about that thing with your kids. We weren't talking about yours. Not, it's not a big deal. It's it's a, I know you guys, and the more I get like that, you more it, it, it stokes the fire, and I, I completely understand. But I just have to tell you, we're flooded with calls now from people who are listening to this uh -huh. over a telephone line in Iowa. Wow. <laughs> Jeff. Yes, hey, Radio Gods. How, how bad does it suck that you're listening to the show over a radio station that's broadcasting Dennis Murphy holding his telephone up to a radio. <laughs> well, number one, uh, the reception isn't really that great to begin with because I live uh, in Davenport, which is about 70 miles east of Iowa City. So it actually but doesn't make that much of a difference to you. <laughs> well, you know, it does uh, because now it sounds like you guys are in more of a well than you were before. Okay, hold on, let's go to another guy who maybe is closer. Hello, Matt. Hey. Jim. Yeah, I'm listening on the Dennis Pirate Network. <laughs> uh, Dennis. Dennis Murphy, who is that station's uber whore. Wow. wow you, you ain't know, that's... kidding, man. He's always here. We're not trying to bust anybody. It's where Dennis recorded his recent fantastic album. <laughs> that, that station is going to get a call from some very angry uh, Infinity Lawyers very yeah. soon. Yeah, not, not cool. Dennis's new LP, One Hand, One Heart. <laughs> one Hand, One Heart. Yeah. That's exactly what the Featuring name of it is. Featuring close to you. Well, hey, I'm, I'm happy that they're, I mean, so maybe you rather... they're going to get an angry call, but I'm happy they're doing it because... It beats the best of sometimes. No offense, guys. No, we understand. I mean, a live show is better than a best of show. And sure. listen, here, this was our entire point with with the, the few people that we dealt with today, all of them of incredibly large, intelligent, yes. big IQ, big gigantic heads. <laughs> huge, huge heads. <laughs> Cone heads. Big heads <laughs> holding, big, <laughs> holding big brains. They dwarf us in, yes. in knowledge. Um, we said to them, well, if we do the show and we just say WJFK, right. 106.7, right. any station that wants to run it can still run it. Mm -hmm. sure. But they, for whatever reason, said no, that today we were yeah. not going to be on the network. Huh. We should have some answers. Could be a day or two, it could be three days, could be a couple of weeks. Could be five answers. years. Answers, we want answers. Well, you'll get answers as soon as we have them. But for now... For now, enjoy listening to the show as Dennis Murphy holds the telephone up to his radio. And, and I would venture to say that mouthpiece is not exactly the clearest. The station <laughs> broadcasted. <laughs> Obstructed view. Hey, hey Dennis, if, if you can hear me now, and I guess he can't because he'd have to have the radio turned up. Yeah, but then they'll lose their feed if he calls in. No, no, don't call. Yeah. Just start talking, Dennis. <laughs> oh, go ahead and just talk about yeah, whatever yeah, talk you want. And sir, are, are you near a radio right now? No, I have to take my kids into the little oh, computer, so I have... Hold on, let me go to somebody else here in Iowa. Hey, Eric. Yeah, hey, doll, what's up? Are you by your radio? Yes, I am. Turn it up, please. Dennis, you have our permission. <laughs> speak into the telephone now. Take the show off. Speak into the telephone. Go ahead, Dennis. Talk for a minute. Can you hold the, ra the phone up by the radio? Wait. There'll be a delay. <laughs> well, Dennis, here's this. Dennis, you have our permission to the phone now. Take the show off. Speak into the telephone. Go ahead, Dennis. Talk for a minute. Can you hold the phone on the radio? Well, Dennis, Dennis, don't be a, isn't doing anything. Dennis, don't be a dope. Unless he just got the phone sat down. Yeah, he's lazy. The radio. He's, he's doing other things. He's left. <laughs> or, something's happening. He he's oh. not dead. He's not <laughs> dead, Rob. I doubt that. I hope not. Hello? Hello, not a mic. So Dennis has not broken in on this pirate broadcast to, to talk? No, not yet. Hey, Rob? Yeah. Maybe he fears prosecution. Do we have Dennis's number? I don't. Uh, Charlie might. Charlie, would you run it in? But it'll be busy. I'll do the call to run her up thing. If he's not holding it, he won't hear it because the phone yeah. is just laying by the radio. And you'd be depriving all those people out in Iowa. <laughs> I know. Uh, Dennis? Dennis is obviously not listening to the broadcast that he's providing. <laughs> which wait, oh. now, wait, now there's a call. Hold on a second. Here's somebody on the inside line. Hello. Hey, it's me. What are you doing? Now, now Dennis, <laughs> how can you... I'm on the road. I'm going to go to the review class. And, You're going to and... what? I'm on the road. I'm going to my class tonight. What kind of class? CQA. CPBA. Yes. Uh -huh. All right. So, so, you just so Dennis, you are not holding a telephone. 
Oh no, my cell phone is on. So you you left the phone like sitting on a table next to yeah. the to the radio. The radio. <laughs> yes, and he's on the road now. Yeah. That is perfect. So I guess uh, the people in uh, Iowa will, will also be able to enjoy the Ron and Fez show if they uh, <laughs> if they so decide. Yeah, <laughs> right, because Ron and Fez come on after we're done. Yeah. Hey Dennis, oh, how are record sales? Uh, record sales eleven. Eleven? Eleven. Wow. Glad to see that they're flying off the shelf. Eleven. Oh. All right. Congratulations to you and Kelly Sofer. All right, Dennis, I, I, I know you did this with the best of intentions, <laughs> but I do believe that probably someone from the legal department will be contacting you. Yeah, don't don't worry too much about it, Dennis, for providing your own missing mind. God, Mike, come on. Can you, can you uh, back me up on this one? Well, I'll tell you one thing, Dennis. I'm not napping about this. Right. Okay. You just uh, be prepared to be be prepared to hear from our legal department. Uh, the legal department, okay. And when when push comes to shove, you just got to face the loser. <laughs> you might want to get a lawyer. The lawyer? Okay, I'll get a lawyer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> lie, Dennis. <laughs> no, hey, I, I'm not, but you're not you're not, you're not mad at me, are you? We're not no, we're not mad at we're you. not mad at you. <laughs> Oh, okay. You're not mad at me. We love you. <laughs> I, I, I love you, too, guy Mike. We love you long time. Me, me too, Mike. Wouldn't that be we love you long time? I said that. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, yeah. We love you long time. Oh, I see. The, the, oh, okay. two, two L's. Gotcha. <laughs> we love you long time. <laughs> but, Mike, I miss you. I miss you, too, Dennis. Superland's <laughs> girlfriend is Mois Maine. Mois Maine. Mois Maine. And Max Muthor. <laughs> and so on. Uh, hey, come on, come on. Uh, and Maniac. I'll put it. <laughs> a brainiac maniac. <laughs> All right, Dennis. Okay. Uh, on the Dennis Muthor's network. See you later. See you later. <laughs> and uh, there he's gone. <laughs> Can't you see him? Serving hard time. What are you in for? <laughs> Pirating a radio show. Okay, Mike, you know, we've not yet got to Buzz? Yes. Your news and comments are going to be not preempted today. Right. But we're running. Even by our standards, even though we're not on the network, we're mm -hmm. late. Mm -hmm. kind of late today. We, right. And we do have an unspoken agreement with Ron that says that, that we're going to try to end as close to 7. Very good. Possible. So we'll break, and I do want everybody to hear about Mike's time in Las Vegas. Yes, sir. The fabulous <laughs> Venetian Hotel and Casino <laughs> with its gondola rides. And guy, I guess maybe I'll have time to just tease a little bit of this Jerry thing. Hello? Oh, Hello, not a mic. Oh, the guy in Iowa is still on the phone. Yeah, he was providing a listen line for uh, Dennis's missing mind. Gotcha. All right. Well, listen, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hey. All right. What? What? Hang up. There you go. He's gone. Uh, WJFK. We'll be right back. 612. WJFK. You know, the cardinal rule is to keep them playing and keep them coming back. The longer they play, the more they lose. In the end... We get it all. The Don and Mike Show. Me? That's why the bosses sent me out here. They wanted me to make sure none of the other crews robbed the guy. Like these two f***ing balloon heads over here. They were going to try to bang us out of 200 f***ing grand? Yeah, right. I'm sure. Don and Mike, WJFK. Washington. Our number is 877-365-3636. You can also call 1-800-636-1067. Or try our secret double secret Washington, D.C. number. 202-432-1067. So please, don't call us. I must say, from where I sit, I am truly enjoying your colorful patois. Shut up, fat ass. Here's Don and Mike. Right. A 106.7 WJFK. Um, you know, it's funny you play that uh, Fred Willard because uh, in the hotel room that I was in out in Las Vegas, the main screen uh, has a promo for all the uh, first run movies, you know, just out of theaters. Right. And that Mighty Wind movie was just on in the background 24 7 with all the different moments in it. And hey, what happened? Funnier in that context than actually in the theater. I was going to tell you, I, I did some research here, and you were right about the NFL teams with two quarterbacks. Right. I said the, the dumb Redskins were like one of two teams uh, San Diego, Washington, Buffalo, Indianapolis, Denver, Atlanta, and Miami. Wow. So they're, does that mean the Redskins would be considered trendsetters? No, <laughs> uh, because Michael Vick will be coming back to Atlanta, and Brian Greasy will be coming back to Denver. So it's only five teams. San Diego, that's Marty Schottenheimer. He's, as Jerry Lewis would say, a retard. 
<laughs> uh, Buffalo. Uh, All right. Indianapolis, you got Peyton Manning. And uh, and Denver, where you have uh, Jake Plummer. Oh, about uh, Jerry. Uh, we'll tease. The, we, we've not gotten to any of the Jerry Lewis stuff from the telephone, and it's really... Not even his physical appearance, it's what he says and the things that were said about him. More whacked out stuff as each year goes by. Better than any Elvis show. And we'll just tease it today with with one tape after we hear about Mike in Las Vegas in which Jerry's talking to a, a firefighter about filling the boot. You know, you firefighter. Yeah, right. right, right. Section, filling the boot. Fill the boot. And uh, Jerry calls some people uh, retards. Oh. <laughs> Jerry. On the NBA telephone. Jerry. Uh, but now, here we go. All right, Mike in Las Vegas. Did I talk to you when I was out? I did one time. One or two you times. You talked to me like four times in Las Vegas. I thought, well, I talked once down in uh, Williamsburg when I was down there, and then a couple of times out in uh, Poolside. I talked to you, right? And also after you got your casino host. <laughs> <laughs> that's, more, that's the part I've never had. Here's the deal. I went out to Las Vegas, and, uh, you know... When you're married, when you're uh, accountable to somebody, you have to, uh, you know, as far as gambling is concerned, you have to uh, kind of keep it in check. And I'm not, I'm not somebody who's do what to, they say. You guys have been with me in a casino, and you know that I, uh, I enjoy it probably a little more than both of you guys. And uh, I like winning. I don't like losing, and I don't go completely mental. But this was for me personally. This yeah. was unchecked gambling oh. at its absolute best. This was really by day hanging out at the pool and then usually starting the gambling about three or four in the afternoon and going because I had this 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 cold. I didn't go super late, right. but I would gamble and I gambled at this place uh, called the Venetian, which is you know it's all Vegas. It's it's really just it's, it's for blind people. It's, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not like any place. Anywhere. I mean, it's you don't you lose track of everything. And I was there for four days. You lose track of time. You lose track of where you are. You don't know what day it is. You're out there, and it's just uh, it, it's nuts. And I was out there, and I gambled um, successfully for the first two days. And what they do with you out there is the more successful you are, the more they kind of uh, want you to be happy. Because they want to get it back. That's the whole idea. And that's why after the second day, um, I w it was recommended to me by a guy walking by that I get a casino host. The casino hosts are in all of these places. Right. And, uh, and they can facilitate. She was a whore. <laughs> no, no. However, she was not an unattractive woman. An older woman. And uh, Jacqueline. Ah, she was an older lady. <laughs> Listen to her name. Was her last name Vargas? Yeah, yeah. And she was... Uh... Jacqueline Vargas. Oh, hello, baby. <laughs> Mike's, Mike's casino host. And somebody had told me, a friend of mine who I had lunch with out there, had told me this guy had said, y you want to go uh, for a female casino host because they are... More because they sense a good no, no, not even remote. They don't do that out there. But what they do is they oh, they suck D in Las, <laughs> Las Vegas. Well, not the casino host. So this is like somebody who's responsible for getting you freebies, like getting free rooms, free meals, and all that stuff. And I it determine I had to determine how much. They give you a little card. You know this. You've seen this. They give you a little card that you put in the machines. And I've gone from. Playing craps, which is the dice, which I used to play all the time, and I just got burned out on that because I lost all the time. Then I went to blackjack, used to play that all the time. I got burned out on that. And so now I have gravitated to the truly, in my opinion, the truly idiot sport. I think that, you know, yeah. it, you know it's not actually true because I read a lot about Las Vegas. No, the, the, it is not true that that's how they make their most money. Quite the opposite. They make most of their money at the baccarat tables from the uh, the high rollers. In but fact, the that's how they make their... dumbest people go to the slot The machines. dumbest... I've always, in my mind, the dummies are always the slot players. And I've gone... I, I made a decision to go to the higher-priced slot machines where you can you really go. lose a tremendous amount of money. <laughs> but the reason I did is that this is the first time I've ever come back from Las Vegas and I have two little IRS statements that they gave me because of the jackpots that I hit. Hey, there you go. I, I hit two big jackpots, and after the first one I hit, that's when the guy said, oh, you ought to get a casino host, and I was doing fine. I was ahead.
Uh, Jacqueline no. Vargas. Jacqueline Vargas, baby. <laughs> Here's the casino. Come by. What can we do for you? Free room. Free meal. Go ahead. Enjoy yourself. And I got a casino host. Got one night for free. Uh -huh. It was and, and the the nights that I had booked at this place were incremental. It started out very expensive, then it got cheaper by the week. She comped the uh, most expensive night there, which was which was fine. But th don't make any mistake about this. You're really not getting anything for free. Right. right. You're getting f in in their own little way. No, they're, they're giving, giving you a free room. Rule. What's the cardinal rule? That in the end. They get it all. <laughs> they get it all, baby. Right. But I think I, you caught me like at a particularly euphoric moment, right? Right after I'd hit a big jackpot, and I was just running around, and uh, you know, I, I, I went out there and got some cowboy boots. I'm <laughs> sure, <laughs> of course. Go. I got these. You know, I love those boots, right? Like and I got them, and they're cheap. You see them, Rob? There, there they are. I called right up, and he goes, "Baby, <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm on a roll, baby. <laughs> I just did two thousand dollars on a slot machine. <laughs> I have to go call." Jacqueline Vargas, my casino host, so she can set me up with my free room, baby. <laughs> Tell them about the stuff at the airport, though, because that's, okay. that's the most like the movie Casino. I wow. get to the airport. I got a flight Friday morning, uh, Friday afternoon, morning afternoon, 1 o'clock flight, where I get to the airport. You go through the security there and get there, and on the board it says 1.30. I'm like, okay, you know, flight's a half an hour delayed. Then they make an announcement, it's 2 o'clock. And then they say 2.30. Well, we've had this happen with all the travel we've done. You get that, that hunch, that gut feeling that things aren't going to work out well with the plane. So I say, I'm going to call Jacqueline Vargas. I did that after I walked up to the counter. And I said, is there any plane that goes out tomorrow morning? Because this is starting to be a CF. Is, it, is there any? Yeah, we've got a plane with no, you know, wide open, plenty of seats on it. I said, well, let me call. So I call Jackie, baby. And uh, she says, yes. We'd love to have you come back and stay. We'll comp you a room. Now, oh. when Mike told me this, I said it's to him... just like the movie Casino where they, you know, they, they, oh, the only they difference got, was I didn't win really big. They got the Japanese guy, you know, the Korean guy. So who, what they call a whale, a guy that gambles like millions of dollars right. in the casino. The guy, the guy who steals the towels and he's been on a big run. And right. he's about to leave town on his jet and they send Rickles out there and Rickles says... I'm very sorry, but there's been a, a technical problem with the with your plane. And the plane is fine. There's nothing wrong with the plane at all. And uh, they just get the, him back to the hotel, so he loses and he loses the money, money that he's won ah. before. So so they say, yeah, we'll bring you back. And uh, th by the time I got back, uh, the plane they told me the next morning had left uh, a one o'clock flight had left at seven o'clock at night. Wow. So I was at. It actually turned out to be a good move, but. It's a Jacqueline Vargas. Hello, Mike. It doesn't sound anything like that. It's more like that. Oh, yes, I'd love to help you. No, but here's the deal. Uh, that was when I, I had the worst run of luck. That's when all of a sudden it was like the casino almost felt as though it was my last three hours that I had. And I was tired, too, and I, so I wasn't going to gamble that long. But it was lose, lose, lose. Mm. Went to a blackjack table after that, you know, which going back to the game that I used to right. Sat with some very, very nice people from Houston, Texas. This one lady that looked like she was like right out of Bewitched, you know, <laughs> sitting there with a big bouffant hairdo going, yes, this is a very fun table, isn't it? And just was losing my ass with a mean blackjack dealer. But, uh, but in the end, I, uh, I was down. I was down significantly, but not down more than I, my initial stake that I planned to lose anyway, which is when you get to... Winner in Vegas, winner in life. Uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, then, I, but technically, I was not a winner because I actually lost. I did get some stuff out of it, though. You know, that's from the the whole thing. Your boots. I got the boots. Your boots. Your room. I got a your couple meal. of shirts. I got a couple of shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and I got two free nights. As I, it turned out, it's two free nights. I want to say Elizabeth Vargas, but because right, that's the right. news lady. Right. Right. Jacqueline Vargas. Lovely lady. And my my friend out there. So, sure. I mean, you know, fantastic. It was uh, host. my host. My host who helped me out. <laughs> Didn't comp my last room service meal, though, which a mm. uh, little bone of contention. What's up with that? Said she'd try to do that. See, they look at what you... It's so sophisticated now. They see every... Especially if you're doing slot machines. Every dime you can. Every dime. Wow. And you know there are slot machines in there? that, that There are $500 slot machines. Where you where you can play a five hundred dollar slot machine? Mm. I mean, I don't. I don't and, and, you did know, you say hello to them, baby? Uh, no, God, no. And you didn't. You don't see. I mean, you don't see any anybody go near those. For, yeah. I mean, I didn't see anybody. Don't you have to like, log in with every slot machine like by swiping a card? And if you don't you do that, your, you don't get credit. You don't right? get credit unless you know you stick your card in there and then it says, "Hey, hello, Michael." <laughs> it does. <it>. Bienvenido. <laughs> oh no! Oh, no. Yeah, really? yeah. And then they they add your your play. 
and you don't, but it's not directly tied into the comps. They kind of just look at that. And it's a separate deal, and then, uh, you know, uh, there's some people that they, you know, you, you've heard about the people they fly out there, baby. Oh, this is Mr. Smith. Uh, come in, Jacqueline. Jacqueline <laughs> Smith here. Jacqueline. <laughs> we must uh, make a lie about the plane not being functional. Uh, if, we, if we do that, we can get him to come back to the casino. See if you can get him to stop by the boots. Listen, <laughs> he's, he's here for two jackpots. <laughs> and uh, we give, him, uh, <laughs> give him a handy. <laughs> no. Get him drunk. Get him back to the table. <laughs> Get him back to the table as soon as possible. Please. We'll do. Vargas out. Feed him. <laughs> Feed him at the slot machine. Bring him for a tray of food. Oh God! And man. bring him back. But you know what? I had a great time. I had a. It was. A, it was. A, it was a lot of fun. I know. I, I, I go again. And it's nice to be connected out there. I mean, I think I could probably call out there and get a reservation at any time. When it was busy. I, I think, think that's any, what I get. I think anybody can call and get a reservation at any time in Las Vegas, right? Uh, no. I mean, like they, a fight night, right? Well, you know, maybe you're right. I mean, I know in Atlantic City you can't. We found that out. The, the, uh, right? You know, my wife was reading in the newspaper telling me that there's some new... Borgata. Uh, yeah, right. Some place that's like Vegas in Atlantic City. It's not? No. Been there? Yeah. Oh, all right. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I don't know. What you, I don't think you'd like it. You might like it. I don't think you'd like it. <laughs> Why not? It, Why not, Mike Vargas? It uh, did not strike me as uh, as opulent as some of the casino hotels out in uh, Vegas. You know, and Vegas is Vegas, man. I mean, it is different. I mean, you go out to to Las Vegas, and really, I didn't hang out by the pool because I wanted to get a suntan. I hung out by the pool because it was just it, they had. It's called the Magic Show, and it was a fashion show all week. Like the fashion designers were in town. And there were fashion models by the pool. Oh. None who would speak to me, baby. But I stared at them behind my mirrors. <laughs> my little eyes were going back and forth and back and forth. God damn. And I had a terrible cold, which was oh. a drag, too. But I mean, yeah, but you're better now. Good way to bake it out in the Vegas sun, looking at the bikini tops. And the right, all the day. But everybody in Atlantic City is gray, unlike Vegas. I mean, everybody's got that gray look. Of all the days that they, they yank our syndication away, mm -hmm. today's the day that Jacqueline Vargas maybe mm -hmm. was, was getting into her Dodge Neon, mm -hmm. driving her trailer somewhere. She might have turned on that low-rated AM station and said, wait a minute, that man, mm -hmm. I'm never washing his hand again. I don't think I carry that much clout out there. Mm -hmm. You know what I think the guys that, the, the guys that matter out there are the guys that, that come in from foreign countries. Well, yeah. you came in from <laughs> the foreign country of D.C. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Jacqueline. They focus on the out-of-towners. They do. Right. The Asian guys that, like, gamble $50,000 a hand right. in a check. Uh, Buzz? Yes. Buzz, here's the deal. Okay. That we're running late. Yes, we are. Shock we're running late, even though we're not on the network. Mm -hmm. Because we, we have, like I was mentioning earlier, we got this deal with Ron and Fez that we want them to come on as close to 7 o'clock as possible. Yes, right. of course. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Problem. <laughs> no problem. No problem. No problem. You were talking. <laughs> Is there something you wanted to say to your newsman? <laughs> yes, I did. Buzz, you'll have to just give us the, the bare bones when, okay. when we come back. Right. And we're not even going to have time for the come on and buzz a little. We'll do it tomorrow. When we get the, 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 Close get, to the bone, Buzzy. Got regular it. Regular episode. Uh, Close to the bone, baby. Uh, plus, we're going to uh, a preview tomorrow and, and play you just w one minute of Jerry Lewis, okay? All right. And after the show, Buzz, yes. champagne and truffles in the Vargas Suite. All right. It's uh, 638. You're beautiful. And this is the Don and Mike show, and you're only hearing us on WJFK. Yes, uh, D.C., very close to Atlantic City. 106.7, we'll be right back. WJFK. Rain tonight, tomorrow, through Friday. Oh, dear. Yeah. It's a right now at 106.7. Start building a better tomorrow today. Thanks, Buzz. No network. WJFK. What's the word from Planet Crackpot? The Don and Mike Show. Listen up, you DM eaters. From Washington, D.C. on WJFK, you can call John and Mike toll-free at 1-877-265-3636. They're ready to believe you. Is anyone missing? Like two pornographic Imagineers, John and Mike. I mentioned earlier, we know today... We lost about 5 million listeners in one day. 5 million listeners, Don. <laughs> P.S.
I think we've had a very loose, very good show today. Yeah. And it'll continue tomorrow. Tomorrow? No matter what happens. Good. Here at 106.7. Well, oh, I wanted to say, speaking of Washington, thanks to uh, Tim and the, the people down at Tim's River Shore, they had that big uh, water stock thing that the band played at yesterday. Uh -huh. And we had a great time. And he's a nice guy. And I uh, wanted to say hello to all those people down there, down on the, on the river. <laughs> if we had uh, done the news today with, with Buzz, which you're not going to just ran so terribly, awfully uh, long, it would have been brought to you by uh, Buzz's favorite product, mm -hmm. Viramax, mm -hmm. sexual enhancer. Yeah, someone call for a doctor? Clinically tested, doctor developed. Viramax works. Get it at Rite Aid, GNC, other select retailers. Try it today. Viramax, one triple eight. Try VMAX. Buzz, I, I promise on tomorrow's episode, we'll do the f two full segments of the, the news and the comments. Very uh -huh. good. I hope everybody listening is, is appreciative of the fact that today we felt more comfortable, mm -hmm. you know, without this network junk, which we were kind of sick of. Uh, some of the stop sets today, the, the commercial breaks were a little longer because we added a little extra traffic. Right. Some of them were actually shorter. Notice because we didn't have to fill time to accommodate the network. Well, you never know. Could, no, you don't. Could, go, could have to go back to doing that. I, I know. I'm just... Allow me to enjoy the moment today. For now. Don't get happy. But uh, listen, there's so many steps that have to be taken. Yes. yes. We go back to... And they're not even baby stepping. No, you know. I mean, they're, they're giant. They're double and triple strides, baby. Mm -hmm. uh, rain. Baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> Tomorrow. Is it contagious, baby? <laughs> and rain through Friday. Oh, yeah. man. Rob, let me make a very quick call here. Okay. To find out about... Because this involves you with the game. All the the cunny honey. Oh yeah, Mike is cool. Yeah. Hung butter, baby. I know who could take care of that for you. Jacqueline Vargas. Oh, let's <laughs> my radio down. I didn't know it was you. Hold on. I was going to say Elizabeth too. Elizabeth. <laughs> this is Jacqueline Vargas, baby. Baby. <laughs> hey, baby. Hey, come on, honey. Hello. Hello. Hey. Yeah. Uh, you know it's supposed to rain uh, every day through Friday. I know, I'm rethinking my uh, Redskins plan. That's what I want to know. Are you going or not? I'll, I will let you know. It depends <laughs> on some gal pals. Okay. Because I might, uh, you know, and the weather's always wrong. So do uh, I have to give you an answer? Or are, are you lining up another day? I'm just curious. Oh, well, if it's, you're curious, I'll let you know. By when? <laughs> uh, it, is there a reason? I mean, if you need to line up another date, let me know. No, I can give, I can give the ticket to Rob, though. All right. Well, I mean... Uh, but I don't have to know now. Okay, good. I can, I can know whenever. That's good. I can know whenever. All right. All right I'll let you know. Um, Love you. Although I'll tell, I'll you, tell you what. I'll let you know before they tell you what's going to happen with the network. Okay? Okay. Well, yeah. Because okay. <laughs> the game is Thursday. I will tell you that when on Saturday we sat down to try to watch this Clemson game. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it was the first game of the year they got killed by Georgia. 30 to nothing. And, uh, and there are kids going to school there, so... I had him on the telephone at the stadium with a loud roar and stuff. And then keep in mind, this was Frida's school. This is her alumni. Right. The, and every kid there is wearing an orange T-shirt. Mm -hmm. They have giant tiger paws on the stadium. I'm watching the game with her. And at one point, Georgia lines up. Georgia, incidentally, wearing white jerseys. Red helmets with a yeah. big with a big letter G on them. They yeah, the bulldogs. Orange. It was they, orange. They, no, there was. Baby, it's red. All right. It's red. They line up. Keep in mind the other team, Clemson, her team, our kids' team, wearing all orange with a, orange. With a tiger oh. paw. But they had white. Didn't didn't they have white helmets? What? No. There's something orange. Confused? Orange helmets. Hmm. Orange shirt. And white pants. So Georgia has the ball. Down. Set. Hunt. Hunt. The handoff. Of course, the guy runs for 20 yards. My wife goes. Oh, that's good. And I said, what's good about that? She said, we just made a big game. And I said, you're such a girl. And you went to this school. Didn't but recognize I, the team colors. Didn't say why. It was, the end of, it was the beginning of the second quarter, and they all, they all switched places that's on me and said. didn't tell. Because the team was going the other way? Yes. Right. Going left to right on your radio dial? <laughs> right. They could, least, girl. they could at least mention that. All right, baby. I'll see you. Hey, listen. Tonight. I can't wait for the game. Here we go. Well, Thursday night, if you want, if you want to go, we're going. <laughs> I love football. Yeah. Here we go tonight, first night alone. What are we having for dinner? Just you and I. I got the grill going, Boo. All right, All right. there you go. Okay. All right, baby. Love you. Love you too. Bye, sweet. Bye. <laughs> Not me. I'm gonna have Jacqueline Vargas fly in some steaks. <laughs> yeah, baby. You know, if she didn't go, if you want to go to the game, you can go with me on Thursday night. Thursday night? Thursday night. I might take you up on that if one. If she doesn't want to go, 
You can go because I just remember you can sit with your uncle, right? Oh, you know, I got a million places I can go. Yeah. Right. So there you go. Drive. I like that Thursday night game idea. If you wanna, yeah, I, I mean, it's a happening. Yeah. If you yeah. wanna, yeah, I, I kind of dig that. But don't push her. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to get. She sounds like she's kind of ticked at you for like wanting to give your tickets away already. No, no, I just want to. You know, I, I know her. I know her. I know that I'm going to get there with her, and it's going to be well. I can't find my friends with my binoculars. You know, that's what she does. You drive. <laughs> Of course I'll drive. Good. You want to drink? I'll Count drive. me in. You got it. Ah, um, I'll bring something for the trip. So listen. <laughs> you know, I'm a different kind of guy to take to a game, baby. So listen. The, Can uh, we play cards? I can't play. Maybe we can tailgate and play cards. Tailgate. <laughs> Little blackjack. No, I'd actually, you know what? I'd actually kind of be into that. All right. Well, if she falls out, you're in. But you want to take him, don't you? You want well, to go. He, you want to sit next to him. He'll be riding with me either way. Oh, so we'll all ride together. Yeah, he needs a ride to the game yeah. either way. All right. Then, then I'm in. Then I'm in. If she doesn't want to go, I'll Vodka. go. <laughs> no. <laughs> Listen, I, I want to play this. Want to play this Jerry thing before we get out of here? Tomorrow we're going to devote a couple of segments on the show to the Jerry Lewis telephone because he's really the most Jerryest of ever this oh, year. Yeah. Wow. Please listen now to what we consider to be the high moment of Very good. Levon. Jerry has a firefighter. This is in hour number 19. <laughs> However, don't let that fool you because Jerry's only been on television for... Well, he did the first four hours and then this is his first hour back. And this is not just any firefighter. This is the president of the International Association of Firefighters. So this is the most important man in firefighting in the United States. Very good. Now, Jerry's going to discuss with him the filling the boot. Firefighters have mentioned this out with the boot. <laughs> okay. Wanting to put money in. It's a, uh, a telephone from us. Gonna just... Is it a self-explanatory clip? Yeah. yeah. Listen when Jerry tosses out retard. All right. And Los Angeles County is a perfect example of this. This year, with the cooperation of management, they raised 270 This is just a tease for what you'll hear tomorrow. Times the amount that they raised last year. But unfortunately, there are elected officials in some communities who, for whatever reason, refuse to allow my members to set up their fill to boot campaigns. Where are they? Well, you, you know, I let you know where they are privately each year so we can go kind of explain it to them. Okay. Explain it. Is yeah, the way I we have to tell explain them. it to them. They're but not going to have to ask me twice. That's right. And, uh, and I don't understand why any go. politician would oppose such worthwhile campaigns, try, but they try, do. Try retard. <laughs> That's a, not a bad. Uh, that's not Jerry, a bad analogy. Ooh. We'll go to work on that next. But I tell you what, we're gonna. Anyway, that's wow. retard. That's just so. Try so what he's doing. Try retard. Retard. <laughs> try retard. And he really has more. <laughs> try. Sound like that for the whole telephone? Yeah. Try retard. <laughs> try retard. Um, Buzz. Yes. Trusted friend Buzz Fig. Buzz. What do you have uh, for weather and then a kicker? Well, uh, yeah, rain through on the on WJFK. Rain through the end of the week, as you mentioned earlier, with a high tomorrow around 80. Right now it's 75 degrees. And finally, while women in this country are moving toward less pubic hair, women in Korea are going for more. <laughs> oh, yeah. Baby! Oh, no! The hair down oh, there oh, is considered a sign of fertility in Korea, so the women there more and more are having hair transplants. Oh, baby! Oh, Oh, wrong. That's from their right. heads. Oh, gross. From their heads to their pubic oh, region. That's oh, so right. God. Quoting a German doctor who does the surgery, the structure of head and pubic hair on Asians is quite similar. Where do I have that? The implanted hair isn't long and rarely falls out. You know what they call the procedure? <laughs> the Vargas. I'm Buzz Burbank on the Don and Mike Show on WJFK. Yeah. All right, we gotta go. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for listening to the show today on 106.7. Yeah. WJFK. Well, let's, just, let's just answer one phone. <laughs> I don't know where they're calling from. Hello, JFK. Hey, what's up, guys? Hi. I just want to know how it feels to fail in Philadelphia. You guys stink. Hey, there we go, baby. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. Meta does. I would never hear you guys now. Is the delay work the same way? Yeah, well, we hate you, and you failed. Yeah, but you, yeah, but you called back out the rest of your phone number? Hey, that's cool, Don and Mike, because I'll take... It's I'll take cool to give out your phone number? I'll take the heat in behalf of everybody. You give us so permission? You give us... You, fail. you give us permission to give out your phone number? Hey, more than, more than happy. Do you give us permission? Just simply say yes if you do. Yes. 856-589... <laughs> 
9703. You guys told us that you'd be like the herpes and you would spread on us. And guess what? You guys aren't. We got rid of you because we're the new hey, I think the police. I think the police are after you, my friend. <laughs> Skateboard's double Hey, part. listen, we're going to be checking on the... Uh, checking on the fantastic effort put out by WYSP, even though we're no longer there. We're going to be checking over the months to see how they do with that great box of records. Yeah. So you so keep listening. Back. You guys are going to get slaughtered. Yeah, they'll be back. Yeah, they'll be back. Yeah, we'll be back. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> All right, hey, now we'll, we'll be checking in with you too, my friend. Thanks for calling WJFK. Yeah, we love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Dope. Pardon me? Ass? Dope. Ass says what? <laughs> Ass. You yeah. love us. You 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 can't stand the fact that we're not on there anymore. We've not been on in Philadelphia for two weeks, but you're calling us today. Why? Exactly. That's because you've been thinking about us the whole time I'm because so you miss us so fairies. badly. That's because you guys are a bunch of fairies and won't answer your phone numbers. Fairies? We We've been on we vacation. It's the first day that we actually were back. So we won't answer our phone numbers. I answered your call. Yeah, but this is the first time in two weeks. We've been on We've vacation. We've been gone on vacation for two weeks. Hey, Why are we arguing with somebody? I Listen, know. shouldn't you be turning it on now to get your mandatory Metallica in? That's right. I mean, we were basically, we're so bad in Philadelphia that you've been thinking about us for two weeks. Hey. Ha <laughs> got uh -huh. you there. You guys are coming back. Got hey, you listen, there, baby. Listen, enjoy AC December. <laughs> hey, how's Buzz doing over there? He buzzes right over here. Say hi, Buzz. Hi, hi, ass. Hey, how you doing, buddy? See, now here we go. Divide and conquer. You know what Not the serious work. part is, though? This guy has been, he was, he's so happy we're gone that he's been thinking about us for two weeks Constantly. while we were on vacation. But I have Constantly. to tell you something. You might laugh. But I tell you what, that Mike and I are making more for not being on WYSP right now than you're going to make over the next two years. That's okay, because you guys were a cancer to YSP. A cancer to YSP. And that's why you've thought about us for two weeks and tried to call for two weeks. That's right. Hey, anything to bother you, bother you guys. Anything. anything to see. You enjoy bothering us. You don't even realize that you hey, like the show. Down and do some internship. You're not bothering us. If yeah. you were bothering us, I would have hung up on you. That's cool. But you you really know, I'll come out there and do some internship and then tell you how I really feel. Tell you how I really feel. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You really can't blame him for his preoccupation. After all, he lives in such a fabulous city. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but listen, enjoy the mandatory Metallica because that's really a happening format. Well, I want to tell you something. I, for one think that the Foo Fighters should be played every 15 minutes. And they are if you listen to WYSP. Hey, Don, it's better to listen to you talking about your wife 500 times a day. Well, well you know what? You seem to know an awful lot about this show for somebody who didn't listen. Because your wife's a fine lady and all, but... You know, you really seem to know an awful lot about this show for somebody who didn't listen. Hey, I listened for a while, but then... No, you, you listen a lot, help. buddy. You know, you wouldn't know those you listen details. All the time. Listen, I'm sorry... Even though we got canned in Philadelphia, we're still very successful, and we're still very happy, and we're definitely at the top of our field, unlike you. Have fun for your listeners in Topeka, Kansas. All them bunch of friggin' uh... They can't even hear you today. Doing hits. Sir, they can't hear you today. That's okay. So he Not doesn't even ask why? No. Doesn't even ask why? About why not? No. No. We well, see, we won't tell you now. Yeah. You, you would have heard why. It's a pretty interesting story. Put me through torture for the last year, year and a half. Is it, we got to go. We don't want to piss Ron yeah, and Yeah, okay, Donna Mike. I hope your voice gets better there, buddy. My voice is fine. Yeah, that's good. It's better. Oh, repeat caller. You, mm -hmm. you you gave yourself away. You called more than once. Hey, guys. How you doing? Oh, you called more than once. Howard Stern, your ratings are going to drop like a friggin' brick. Mm -hmm. Stern stinks. You guys stink. Well, you seem to have an awful lot of hate in your soul, my friend. No, I just hate you guys, and I hate Howard Stern. Well, you seem to hate two people, and maybe well, you Well, then why do you listen to YSP? Because he's still on that station. Oh, I was dedicated for, you know, since I was a kid. Ah. And, you know, uh -huh. Howard Stern just stinks anymore. I was a big time. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I'm tired of talking to you. You're a moron. You really are an idiot. You too, guy. You really are an idiot. Can you tell me something? How many times have you sat in front of the radio, thought about Mike and I, and just rubbed one out? <laughs> <laughs> really? How many times? Because of your wife, I rubbed a few out. Yeah. You know? well, well, that's a, that's part Thank of the you. show too. That's Thank a compliment. You. Bye bye. And again, we have your permission to give your phone number out. You say, be my guest. And when, what, would you like to give the phone number? And we'll, we'll we'll delay you. For every phone call too. Why don't you Get give us? Everybody that hates your gut. Why don't you give us? Why don't you give us the phone number? Go ahead. Okay. Area code eight five six five eight nine nine seven zero three. This man is an idiot. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. What? No, no. We. Hey, wait. Now, all right. We. You Hold gave on. the phone number out. Hold on, did I? Did I hang up on him? Hold on. Are you, are you still there? 
Gag, I forgot that. Gag, it's going to be a yeah. Well, he has to go and get a cheese wet. <laughs> All right, that's it. We got to <laughs> We gotta go. See you tomorrow on 106.7 WJFK. Okay. Very good. And they ask us why we're happier today. Jesus Christ. All right, good day to you, sir. 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 I went to Korea, and the hair is getting longer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, um, eater. Till we meet again. Sammy Davis Jr. saying, uh, be kind, be nice, and I hope the next performer has the pleasure of having as nice an audience as you've been tonight. And let me leave you swinging. <laughs>